Who believe I am live? Finally? Can Proctor break honey record of 15 minutes? What are you talking about? I can last longer than 15 minutes. Trust me. It might be... A <laughs> uh, when I, when I go foreigner, you, you, you worry me. You worry me quite a lot. But hello, gentlemen. I, I seem to have oozed my way back onto your screens somehow. Damn it. Yes, I'm sorry. I am the eternal disappointment. Uh, oh, yes. Let me just turn off my VP. Oh, no. The bird is back. Yes, the bird is indeed back. Reconnection successful. Thank you, OBS Studio. Why do I start getting beeps the second I go live from various places? Why can't people wait till after I'm done? Ah, uh, It's been a little while since I've streamed, and I hope you will all forgive me for neglecting you. I understand that there were some suicide pacts going around for... Uh, you know, uh, how long people would have to endure an existence without without me, without Proctor Zakharov. And I realized that I've sat down and uh, I now cannot... Oh, there it is. There it is. Now, now my chat is working again. Excellent. Hello, Proctor. Hello, Eureka. Hello, Biohazard Exa. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Decato. Hello, CBM. Hello, Trill. Hello, Porian. I haven't seen you around for a while. I forget, is, is Porian even in the Discord? I've completely forgotten. And also, somebody sent me a $60 tip from... When was that? When was that? I think it was from, uh, 13 hours ago. Thank you very much for, for funding our insanity. Uh, they said was... Least I could do for giving me a bit of the internet as I remember it. I'd like a banner going, I must not glow post, I must not glow post, I must not glow post. And for... <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Well, I, I, I apologize to I miss the old internet if he happens to be watching right now. But uh, he sent me that uh, donation via stream elements. So I didn't actually see it until I accessed my stream elements right this moment. To, uh, to to do things. We've got a little bit of stuff lined up for tonight. There's... Uh, <clears throat> I don't... I, I, I only really started paying attention to the Twitter side of VTubing when the, the Tora Kura stuff was brought to my attention, and that was interesting. I, I can't help but wonder, like, were... Were cancellation documents and, you know, my experiences with documents that common before the Torakura thing? Or is it just, is it the fact that he has, he was successfully cancelled that made them all just pop out of the woodwork? Because, golly trousers, there's a lot going around. I think I've got two that are open that I've kind of glanced through. I, I, I don't really know what they're about, but... It worries me. It worries me. Hello, Super Duper. Hello, Naganon. I'm very sorry that uh, that Hexa has has died of Ligma. Uh, the, the the Green Goblin just couldn't stay with us. Her her sacrifice shall be mourned for all generations. Never again shall we hear her uh, um whatever whatever noise uh, Hexas make. I suppose. Uh, oh yes, here's Porian. Porian has popped up again. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm sorry I did not stream last week. Uh, the problem was that the week before then I had a cold and it stuck with me the whole week. And I think after last Wednesday, did I stream over the weekend? I've genuinely forgotten. I think I might have streamed Saturday, did I? Hex's gimmick is being accidentally racist and anti-Semitic. I mean... Uh, according to the ADL, you can't be an accidentally anti-Semitic. Wait, what happened to her? Super duper, you are so charmingly naive, I can almost believe that you are a small Asian woman at times. <coughs> Pardon me. No, but yeah, I, I got sick, and uh, I, I got into this cycle where I would stream, and I would really hurt my throat, and then I would stop streaming, and I'd take a few days... I really need to, to get rid of bot ricks because for some reason it just it just is convinced that I'm using that. She is our tuba. God. 
Ugh. I'm starting to drink early tonight because I had a very nice homemade pizza earlier. And it, while it was extremely nice, it was also extremely salty. And then I had uh, I had some Turkish honey roast coffee, which was really, really gorgeous. I had a I've had a, a bag of uh, Turkish honey roast coffee beans lying around for literally two years at this point. And I've never bought a coffee grinder, so I, I, I didn't really do anything with them. But I just uh, I actually used a mortar and pestle to to break up the uh, the coffee beans so that and i've got a little like a drip um coffee maker thing where it just uses gravity to to filter the the hot water through the the crushed up beans uh, through a filter and that was I, I really like that i don't like acidic coffee at all i love coffee i drink like four or five cups every day but i really don't like the acidity in coffee i much prefer a smooth coffee like smooth and mellow coffee. It can be strong. It can be as strong as you like, but it has to be smooth. I don't like the acidic bite to coffee at all. And so, but I found that the, the pour filter method, I don't know if there's like, it's it's the, it's not a French press. Uh, I think it's just called drip coffee or something, but that's really good. It's really, really smooth and mellow. It is exactly how I like my coffee. I like my coffee like I like my women. Smooth and mellow and very relatable. Mm, that's a bit of a proctor fact for you all. Uh, proctor cycle? Yeah, um, my son up. I have got to go over and I need to turn that off. <laughs> Oh, oh, pardon me. I apologize. I was up at 10 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Which, considering if you know my sleep schedule, I was up at something like uh, 3, 4 a.m. the night before. That's why I've had like five or so hours worth of sleep. And it's, so it's, it's, it's just kind of a whole thing. Window capture. No, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Go here. And now you go, there we are, there we are. <clears throat> loading? Uh, it's not loading for me, apparently. Seems to be all okay here. For a couple of seconds, but it, it works in the end. Uh, yes. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a fairly mellow stream tonight. I have a bunch of stuff to get through. We'll see how far, how far we get through. I thought that we'd, uh, we'd do things in a nice... Is it? Is there seriously no, no dot? No, there's not. No, you will have to put up with the light mode on on the next thing that I'm going to show you because uh, there is no dark mode. Literally, there is no dark mode. It's a very old website, I think. Also, Proc, I think your stream is having some buffering problems. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Apparently, it says. Well, it says in OBS that. Yeah, the bitrate is really dropping for some reason. Why is it dropping? I have there's literally nothing that I can do about that. How can Elon Musk do this to us? I'm very sorry. Again, this is officially out of my control. And the thing is, it is not as if it's a bad night. It is a beautiful, clear spring night for a change. It is not horrible weather. It's not it was pouring with rain just a couple of hours ago, but now it's quite pleasant again. Uh, but this was something I wanted to do because it was suggested to me when I asked for stream suggestions is that I wanted to do this thing over here. Let me turn off studio mode and actually go over there. Here we are. Here we are. Now allow me to zoom in. How is that on the screen? Yes, that's just about perfect. There we go. <laughs> Does Boss Man like that One Piece anime? I have no knowledge whatsoever of One Piece. The uh, weird thing about One Piece is that I actually really, really dislike One Piece's art style. I absolutely, I much prefer realistic anime and One Piece's art style with all the ridiculous characters, like the, the glaring luminous colors and all the designs 
I, I just don't like it at all. It's it is absolutely not my thing in in any capacity. But for for some reason that this particular character that I use for an avatar, like his design is, is the one design in all of One Piece that I unambiguously really really love. I would. Uh, like I have used this character, this character's like fan art as like as art to represent characters in the role playing games that I've run several times in the past, and when it came to uh just getting an avatar for a TVA because I I never added an avatar for myself on uh, Kiwi Farms. The avatar that I have on Kiwi Farms on my Kiwi Farms profile was actually given to me by. Uh, yawning Sneasel, one of the ex moderators, because when I joined uh, Kiwi Farms in 2015, there was this really weird thing where it was like after a certain number of posts, you were ex you were expected, you were expected to, um, to have an avatar, and I at the time. I I used Kiwi Farms, but kind of as a repository. I was I wasn't really. I mean, I literally did not even know what an SJW was when I started using KF. So I was very much not part of the KF culture in any way. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to give myself an avatar on KF because when I post there, I don't feel as if I, I'm ve I'm definitely a tourist. And I was like that, like 2015, and so. I never gave myself an avatar very deliberately, and it was something that a lot of people actually got really, really steamed up about. Really steamed up about. And in the end, like, without my permission and without my control, uh, Yawning Sneasel just edited my profile and gave me an avatar that I couldn't uh, remove. And so all I did was I use uBlock Origin, so I just selected my avatar in uBlock Origin and created a special rule to replace it with the default uh, Zenforo uh, like initial avatar. And so if I use Kiwi Farms and I log into my account, I, I don't even see my own avatar. I, I disown that avatar and I just pretend I don't have one. Because uh, the best way to make sure I never do something is to force me to is to force it on me without my say so. Because then it's just like no, sorry, I'm I'm never doing that. Not because I I didn't really want to avatar <laughs> avatar rape. I mean, I just I didn't really care. I found it kind of hilarious that somebody would would care to such a point that they would go to the trouble of of messing with my profile just to give me an avatar. That's good. You should be forced to use an avatar. I disagree. I mean, I would like I like people to use avatars simply because my memory is terrible. So uh, my head falls off every few days, and I just completely forget who everybody is. If you were to change your avatar in chat, I I would have to struggle quite hard in order to remember who you were. Put it that way. It's like that bad. Dude, just gonna talk to stuff and ask Null to remove it. Yeah, but I don't care enough. I don't care enough. That would take effort. That would require me to actually go to, to go to TTS and ask about it, and I just don't care. Again, it's like I you my 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 uh U block origin just automatically filters it and gets it out of my way, and I don't care. Proctor, your stream is dying. Mm hmm. This is your internet is not having you. like I don't understand why I why it's so bad because. Let me go to, like, YouTube. Yeah, I, everything is working. Everything is working perfectly fine. There's no problems. I, I don't get it. Let me just close down some stuff. On, on the very, on the vague off chance, it's something in the background of whatever, whatever I'm using. Refresh. I don't care enough, cares enough to use filters to remove the avatar from you. It literally took me two seconds. I right clicked on the avatar. I clicked create custom rule in uBlock lock origin. And then I said, and then I clicked filter this element. And I did that once in 2015, nearly 10 years ago at this point. And I have not given it any thought since, except when it comes to thinking about avatars on the internet. That's how much I care, okay? 
He's in Ember's house, guys. I uh, yeah, yeah, I I do not understand why this is such an issue. Refresh. Like what am I supposed to refresh? Like refresh the stream? Could be YouTube sided? Yeah, because yeah, there is no explanation for it on my end. If I try and do, let, let me do a speed test. Let me see, let me see what my my well, a, speed, a speed test won't interrupt my. I don't suppose it will. I'm just going back to just chatting in case for some reason this pops up something on the screen that OBS picks up because it does. This does basically dox me every time I use it. That would be slight. Well, actually, no. The only thing that uh, I'm I'm fortunate, my IP just pings to Dublin, and if you know that I'm in Ireland, it's like congratulations. You now know that I'm in the capital uh, city of Ireland. After I already said that, well, I'm not in the capital city of Ireland, but for some reason, Ireland is just small country with such weird internet access and stuff that basically everything in Ireland just automatically pings to. Yeah, this this IP hub is in Dublin. Uh, do whatever you like from there. Upload. Upload is 3 megabits per second at the moment. Okay, that is bizarre. Download is 45. No, that, no, that's not. This is, that's milliseconds. So download is 60 megabits per second. Upload is 5 megabits per second. So, yeah, that's not too brilliant. Windows plus G enable. That just opens Xbox Social. Proctor gonna make a Google Doc my experience with Yawning Sneasel. I mean, I think Yawning Sneasel is off the forum now. I think he left like years ago. Are you not using Starlink anymore? No, I'm literally using Starlink right now. Like that's what I'm using this at this moment. That is what I'm connected to. Yes, it is indeed. That's the only thing that I can be connected to. Oh, it seems to like it's showing four bars of signal again. Is Starlink actually worth it? Yeah, Starlink it seems to be perfectly worth it. I mean, Starlink is is unironically faster than what is than what it was before. So it's it's better than what it was. I mean, apart from like instances like this when it's slow for some damn reason, but you need game bar bill gates says so i mean i i have a like a i ran a debloater script when i first installed windows 10 that was like to strip out strip out everything in windows 10 like strip out cortana strip out the telemetry features strip out xbox help strip out the the stupid app store thing strip out all of this stuff and it's it, it. I just don't understand why anybody. If if I'm ever forced onto Windows 11, I think I'm gonna go with Linux. Like I refuse to deal with any more of of Microsoft nonsense because Microsoft is unironically one of the worst companies in the universe. Microsoft is so is so bad. I remember like the beautiful days of of Windows XP when. You know, you could get, you could just get a random cracked version of XP and have every single feature. You could have full Microsoft Office and all this kind of stuff. And now Microsoft Office is like permanently online and synced to the cloud nonsense and all this kind of rubbish. And I, I just don't get it, guys. I really don't get it. You can do that in Rufus before install, by the way. I do not know what Rufus is, so... Uh, so yeah, I, I I really don't know what Rufus is. You will have to enlighten me, CBM. And one more ping, a majig. Unplug it and plug it back in. That usually works. <laughs> People say that until they have to use Linux and they swiftly come crawling back. Yeah, XP was great. Constantly deleting bonsai buddy, getting viruses and word doc. I never got. A single virus in my entire time using Windows XP. And I was using Windows XP when I was first on the internet at like age age 11 or 12. So yeah, I was not exactly a savvy internet consumer. And yet I somehow managed to avoid getting viruses on Windows XP. Now actually, I think like I did get one or two Trojans and stuff. 
when I was uh, torrenting things, but I mean, all all I needed to do for that was just use was just install malware bytes and run malware bytes after each every time I torrented like a game or whatever. The only thing Windows has over over Linux aside from for games was convenience, which Windows 8 on would chat on. Yeah, not beating the allegations with going to Linux. I mean, Linux. There are the funny thing is that the only guy, the only guy that I know who actually uses Linux is like a 65 year old retired policeman. So, you know, <laughs> and he absolutely swears by Linux. He says that Linux does basically everything. He says it has a graphics edit. He runs all his graphics editing software and all this kind of stuff off it and everything. And he says he's had no problems and issues. Is the application we cough poor individuals use great beautiful drives for installing OS roof state to remove the blood of Windows 11 ISO before even installing? Uh, if I have to upgrade to Windows 11, I will seriously consider thinking about that then. Maybe I'll ask you about that if, if the time ever comes. Because I just refuse to use Windows 11 in what I do. Never understand if people get Trojans in their computer. Why are they putting God? Huh? 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 And by the way, stuff is still buffering, by the way, because it's showing that I haven't had too many more frame drops overall. Does using a Steam Deck with Steam OS count as using Linux? I've never met anyone who uses a Steam Deck ever. I really, I have no idea about all these weird peripherals that are supposed to be like, oh, like the internet. Just it, like a Chromebook or whatsoever. I I just don't get it. Just use a PC. Just use a PC. No, yes, that's really that's really helpful information. <laughs> really helpful information, guys. I mean, if it's extremely bad, I'll just I'll just stop streaming and do this stuff tomorrow, maybe. Or if you want the Linux with gaming, there is Chimera OS, but you need a Radeon card. I don't think I have a Radeon card. I have a something or other, a stream. Okay, stream. Chromebooks are just e-waste. I mean, there was this, like, Luke the Notable released his, his like, April Fool's video, uh, well, on April 1st, 10 days ago, and he was playing Minecraft on a Chromebook, and I found that video quite entertaining. <laughs> And how just how bad that experience was, and his uh, existential suffering during that uh, that video was quite you know, it was quite impressive. Ah, uh, if you have a Ryzen APU, it also works. You are using a few too many tech terms for me to understand. I could just about build my own PC. I managed to put my PC together without anything exploding and no, uh, no egregious, no egregiously painful moments. And then, oh, I, I, I got like a, a, fa a fairly powerful PC overall. And then all I do is play stuff like Factorio and RimWorld. I really should install more RAM. I only have thirty-two gigabytes of, uh, of like um, gaming RAM. So I need to. I could plunk in like something like one hundred and twenty-eight if I really wanted to. And I'm not sure if that even would do anything for something like uh, um, RimWorld. Because I find it really irritating. I've been playing RimWorld uh, for I've had I've been on massive RimWorld kick, but the trouble is, the same thing happens uh, every game of RimWorld that I play. Like late game, like I've got re performance mods and everything, but with the uh, with the mods with the mod playlist that I use, I just oh sorry sorry. The game performance just starts to tank after after a few like in-game years and it, it always happens and in this case it's not like i was even playing like a mega base all that happened was i was playing uh, i was playing a colony that uh, like was mandatory travel so i deliberately used like the mandatory travel feature in ideology to prevent myself from building a mega base because i was getting into this cycle of just playing rim world and building a mega base and having just being invulnerable against all attacks and any attack that was large enough to actually breach my defenses was so large that the game would just start lagging tremendously and uh, when an insect raid takes something like an hour and a half to 
reach your gates because the FPS drops to around two and a half whenever uh, on normal speed, unless you run the game on normal speed. Yeah, that's a bit hard to justify keeping playing. I mean, that's the thing. I'm a very good... Well, I say I'm a very good. I'm a good RimWorld player. I, I do play RimWorld with a lot of mods that do make the game considerably easier, but they do add, like, hundreds of new events and so on and various ways to get to get broken and, and damaged. So it swings and roundabouts. I mean, my problem with RimWorld is that RimWorld is a fantastic game, but it's too arbitrary. RimWorld and Vanilla, it, it just has events that are clearly designed to do nothing but annoy you, that you can't predict, you can't really protect yourself against, that events just happen and colonists either die or, or they just get horrible diseases and... It's there's so much luck. There's such a luck based factor to it. I don't like that. I much prefer. But the trouble is, you install mods to take the randomness out of RimWorld, and you realize that RimWorld is actually a game that is slanted really heavily. Like RimWorld's balance is completely upended. Is that RimWorld is slanted in your favor in so many ways. You can build kill boxes. You can. You can, you can game the technologies, you can use OP stuff, and the game's only response to that is to have just like broken events spawn 50 troops with power armor that airdrop past your defenses and land right in your kitchen area as your colonists are all nursing babies by the fireplace. And everybody is just shot to death by like legendary quality charge rifle wielding power armor soldiers with no ability to counter them. You can't build thick roofs, you can't build anti-aircraft guns to shoot their pods down, you can't build ra you can build radar, but it can't tell you when, you know, somebody's doing an orbital insertion right on your base. And it's just arbitrary. I don't like the arbitrariness, and so I use mods to smooth out the vanilla experience, and then they're like, uh, uh, yeah, you you now now you realize how easy it is without those those asshole events to just build an invincible base and be completely untouchable by anything. I don't know. I, Rimworld is a game that I would so dearly love to give a nuanced rating of on Steam. Like Steam is like either positive or negative. I would love to be able to give like a fifty percent rating for Rimworld because it's such a beautiful game, but it's also such a such a weird game. You have to go out of your way to do things. That's why you only build into the mountains and get them under comfy minus 20 so there's no bugs burrowing. I mean, yeah, that's true. And that's a possible way to do things as well. Which is another, it's, it's counterintuitive. It's very counterintuitive. And you start breaking the game when you do that. See you later, Prostate. See you later, Super Duper, I guess. Oh, dear. <sighs> I was shown something. The cast review must be a watershed moment. Huh, that's interesting. I'm just looking through my tabs, my wonderful, glorious tabs at the moment. You know what, I actually do feel more like just doing the political test kind of thing today. I don't feel like reading documents right now. As you can probably tell, I'm fairly low energy. I mostly wanted to stream because I was just tired of not streaming, and I completely understand if uh, if uh, people find the low energiness less, less appealing. But I would really like to get into this, because... Oh dear, here comes the barking. Here we are. So we have the political compass, and I think the political compass... These questions are very interesting to me, because I ran through them once already. Did you end up watching that video of that detransitioner woman? I don't really- I don't know what video you're talking about, uh, Luminous. I've watched several detransition videos, so if you're talking about one that's just come out, then you'll have to tell me specifically what the video title is, otherwise I, I just won't remember. Uh, what is this? Oh, it's Cub Cubano Man is just on the just on the Discord. Wait, what the heck? Oh, 
<laughs> uh, I've done a silly thing. Hmm. But I thought it would be good to take this test and prove once and for all what an enlightened person I truly am. Because there's a lot of interesting questions here, and also a lot of questions that I feel highlights the difference in society between those who know and those who don't. Because one of the things that I dislike about politics is the fact that two people can have opposite stances on the same issue, but the issue is their, their stances are not because they have extreme differences of opinion, but simply that one person knows the issue from a more nuanced perspective than the other person. It's like a lot of things with government tariffs and regulations, is that a lot of people are like, oh, we have to regulate. Uh, you, we have to regulate corporations and so on, because they're evil capitalists. And other people are like, no, you shouldn't regulate governments. Uh, you shouldn't regulate e economics, because then you turn the government into a tyranny. And the government has no incentive to not regulate. And uh, it's like, I found Politiscales a better test. I got a libertarian, capitalist, ultra-conservative monarchist. <laughs> Let me just look that up, okay? Like you said, Politiscales. I'm assuming that is a specific thing that... Uh, that you are recommending. Let's have a look. Politiscales, the political test. Huh. You know, I think I will take this just because it's easier on the eyes. It's grayscale instead of uh, bright white, so it will be easier for people to read without getting their eyes blown out. Start the test. Oh, there's 117 questions. That's interesting. Oh, I, you know what? That's a good. This was a good suggestion. This was a good suggestion, Magdalena's Rex. I instantaneously like this uh, test a lot more than the other one. Do you get an autism diagnosis as well? Look, if if there is, can if you uh, hands up, hands up in this chat. You know what? I'm just. I'm literally going to make this a poll. <sighs> oh, goodness me, one of these jaw-cracking yawns. It's probably because I'm digesting that very large pizza that I was eating. If you like VTubers, you're autistic, so not really needed. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you there. Anyway, question one. The filing and storage of personal records should be delimited strictly, and database cross-checking should be forbidden. Hmm... I would say that I somewhat agree with this, because I really feel as if... Uh, I'm going to assume this is referencing data sharing, and I think that I think that somewhat agree is reasonable, because... I feel as if there are some legitimate cases where your files should be shared for the sake of... Honestly, personal convenience especially between things like doctors and so forth. But there should always be the consideration of, is this in the patient's best interests? Is this necessary for the other physician? And if it goes beyond that, it should be not allowed. And you should also... I feel it's, it's very important that people know what their data is being used for. I think that every person in the world should have the absolute right to know exactly how and where their personal data is being used. Somebody, there should, if there is going to be data sharing of any sort, there should also be, this is actually something you could possibly use things like, uh, like, um, NFT technology for. Like, this is just me spitballing completely here. Imagine if every person had, like, a unique NFT associated with them that 
contained their ID and their information. Let's say, or even a couple of different ones. Let's say your medical tech, your medical information. Let's say your medical information is attached to an NFT, or contained within an NFT, or whatever that kind of whatever that kind of thing is. I'm not a code person, but basically, at any point in time, you could access a blockchain, which would tell you precisely where your data was being used who had accessed your data and where on the like like the medical blockchain it had been accessed and so you'd have a way of personally verifying everywhere that your data had gone and you would have then the ability to contact those people and be like hey you used my information uh, would you can you you can you tell me why and what you were doing with it please i think that would be a pretty a reasonable thing to do Again, I, I, I'm not saying this is the best thing to do, but it's just an idea that I have that I feel will be possibly in some way better than the current ridiculous system that we operate under. We'd see a lot of South Americans selling their information. I mean, if you want to, you should have the right to sell your personal information. I'm not saying that everybody, that there should be like absolute mandatory privacy, even if you don't want it. I think that people should be allowed to be as private or as extroverted as they want. If somebody wants to sell their genetic information, if somebody wants to sell their medical ID, if somebody wants to sell any of that, let them do it. Let them do it. Just if they do so, then they're not allowed to complain if it's ever used against them. It's that, just make that a rule. It's that simple. If you voluntarily gave up your data on the basis of informed consent, you have wa waived the right to complain if it's in some way used against you. Anyway, let's move on. Some would agree. We should always distance ourselves from protesters who use violence. I mean, I would say... I would, again, somewhat agree... I won't say absolutely agree because I feel I know you're streaming oh sorry I'll just I'll just answer this typing ASMR Sorry, someone just asked me a question that I answered. I feel as if, if pro, if you knew for a fact that a protest was not going to cause harm, then that automatically defangs the protest a great deal. And it also depends what kind, what kind of violence you're talking about. Because look at the Canadian truckers' protest. Is that they? were accused of using violence on several ca on several incidents because they a lot of people consider the way they used their horns to be violence because they would just uh, like be in city squares and just sound off incredibly powerful truck horns for hours and hours and hours every day and you can define that as violence because it caused harm to some people and I think that saying that it's not a form of violence is kind of playing a I'm not touching you game with definitions. And so I do think that in those cases, however, violence was justified because it was being wielded by people with very clear goals in that if they wanted the government to lift the vaccine mandates for trucking companies. And if the government had given them that, then they would have stopped honking their horns. Like, so, and you can't, and I'm pretty sure that nobody was killed in those protests by the said honking of horns. And the, the point of a protest is to cause disruption in some way that makes it impossible for people to ignore what is being protested about. It, it it should be the last resort of people who have exhausted absolutely every other avenue with which to plead their case. So yeah, I think I will go with somewhat agree, and I think that that violence is violence is always a bad thing, but it is also sometimes less bad than the consequences of doing nothing. 
Shall we put it that way? That's my that's my centrist attitude on it. Somewhat agree. <laughs> if two countries have similar economies, social systems, and environmental norms, then the free market between them has no negative impact. I have no idea what to say here. I am gonna go this is auto this is neutral or hesitant for me. I have absolutely no idea. I mean, I suppose my gut instinct is somewhat agree somewhat agree or neutral or hesitant in fact i will go somewhat agree because in like the thought process that i have right now i see no reason why this would be negative so somewhat agree individuals who get out of prison should be assisted in their reinsertion yeah i think so BLM 2020 was kind of unique because its violence was coordinated top-down. It wasn't grassroots violence. It was East very astroturfed and supported, kind of similar to the Maoist Red Guards and Maoist Empower. I absolutely agree. Magdalena's Rex, that's a good point. I wouldn't care as much if I was getting some of the cut. I mean, it's my info they're making money off. Where's my cut, asshole? <laughs> yeah, use the phone a friend lifeline. <laughs> uh, I would absolutely agree with this. And with the caveat that I completely disagree with the way that prison is currently used. My attitude towards prison is that prison should not exist. And I know that's an extremist viewpoint, but my attitude is based on the fact that I am a traditional Christian. And what is very interesting, if you look at the Bible is that there is no provision for incarceration in God's laws to the Israelites. There is execution, there is public humiliation, there is corporal punishment, there is fines and, um, yeah, fines basically, and restitution to the victims, but there is no prison. No prison whatsoever. Courts were expected, trials were expected to be fast. You were that people were expected to gather and quickly decide the guilt or innocence of a person. There was to be no prolonged incarceration, and the punishment for sin was to be quickly meted out and gotten over with. And the most final thing that could happen was death. You have to you have to base your answers on in my ideal society. Yeah, I suppose that's true. But I mean, again, it, it's a case of trying to understand what the test, because I mean, my my ideal society would frankly, in a lot of ways, be very be pretty authoritarian to I think a lot of traditional people. But my idea of authority is completely different from other people, because to me, the kind of authority that has that should rule over people's lives is one that has the ability to objectively prove that it can successfully rule over people's lives better than those people themselves. Which, you know, is kind of tainted by the... Well, not tainted, but uh, but filtered through the lens of the fact that, you know, I am a Christian and I believe that God has the ultimate authority to decide what is good and bad. Based on the fact that if he created something, he should have the user manual handy to, to tell us how it works. But again, that's uh, that's drift. You, you will very quickly come to tell that uh, uh, religion is probably going to feature pretty heavily in my answers to a lot of these. But yeah, I I would I would agree because I think in my ideal world, if there was such a thing as prison, then after you've been punished, your punishment should be enough to make restitution. <coughs> sorry, just dropped a fork on my table. Should be should make restitution to the victim, and then you should be allowed to get on with your life in the hopes that you had learned your lesson. Language is defined by its users, not by scholars. Uh, that's a hard one. I can't really say anything about this without going on a gargantuan tangent, and I don't like going on these kinds of tangents without being able to pretty adequately, accurately define why I'm arguing. And I honestly don't just, I just don't really care too much about this. I would say somewhat, ag somewhat agree, actually, because I've, hmm, users. I'm going to go neutral or hesitant on this one. 
Because I think this is too subjective of a question for me to answer otherwise. Humans should neither eat nor exploit animals. That's a loaded question. I think that people should be allowed to eat animals if they are well cared for beforehand. I don't, th I don't think that eating an animal that has lived an objectively better life than it would in the wild is a bad thing. And I don't think that would be exploitative. Whereas I think that raising an animal in very miserable, unpleasant conditions and then eating it at the end is basically being an asshole. So I will go with somewhat agree, somewhat agree, because I think that in, I would almost certainly be vegetarian if I wasn't able to buy meat from a supermarket. Although the irony is that if I, I could not possibly, I would stop eating chicken, put it that way. There is no way in hell that I would be able to slaughter one of my own chickens to eat. Whereas... Ironically, if you had something like a rabbit or a guinea pig, I could totally see myself slaughtering that thing and eating it. A lot of people are like, oh no, guinea pigs are adorable. Guinea pigs are, are just wonderful, sweet little things. No, a, a guinea pig is a meal. <laughs> I don't see what the point of, of having guinea pigs as pets is. I think they are particularly stupid. They die at the drop of a hat. They're kind of useless. They're too stupid to really have a serious relationship with you in the same way that even a chicken can. Where, uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I just do not feel much intrinsic empathy towards something like a guinea pig. <clears throat> same with rabbits. A lot of people adore rabbits. I I just don't feel empathy for towards rabbits. I mean, I'm not saying I would be like, oh yeah, it's a rabbit. I, can, I would feel good like bashing this thing's head into a concrete wall. No, it's just that with birds, I look into a bird's eyes and I see a, a, a bright spark of intelligence and energy in a bird's eyes. Whereas I look into a rabbit and a hamster's eyes and I see food, sex, 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 food, oh, and then sex. And I, I just feel if your existence and your, your mentality revolves purely around breeding, then I just don't care about if you've or if you've already if you've already nutted one and sown the next uh generation or twenty, then I really don't care if I have to cut your throat and sing, and sling you on a barbecue, mate. <laughs> No, Azihara, your brain, your brain it worries me. That's hamsters. Guinea pigs are cute and they purr and are very friendly. I mean, if you say so. If you say so. Uh, oh, I, I didn't realize I clicked on with that. Uh, so somewhat agree. It is a small group that consciously and secretly controls the world. Absolutely agree. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> We shall not speak of that again. School should mostly teach our values, traditions, and fundamental knowledge. I somewhat agree. Somewhat agree because... Hmm, actually thinking about it, somewhat or neutral or hesitant, I would say somewhat agree. But in my mind, the average person would not even go to school until... I would say that school, you should abolish primary school or... Uh, the, the equivalent of elementary school entirely. I think that children should be raised at home until at least age 10 or 12. I think it is the duty of the parent to educate a child and inculcate their generational values into their child until their child is mentally mature enough to handle the outside world to a degree that they can be sent to a more organized school where they are taught more practical things, as well as more, say, advanced values, more generalized traditions, and more societally applicable knowledge. So, some would agree. The police should be armed. Uh, 
School should teach cultural values, not personal ones, since those vary. Yeah, I suppose that. <laughs> Segs Takeshi Yamuro, what? The police should be armed. Mm. I... I'd say the police should be armed to the same degree that the average citizen can be armed. Or, but failing that, in high crime areas, the average criminal is armed. Because, I mean, it's completely, it is literally completely pointless to have a disarmed police force and an armed criminal force. So I think that police should be allowed to have weapons, but they also should constantly be required to justify why those weapons exist. I don't think that's unreasonable. So yeah, I'll go somewhat agree with that. I love how my chat on YouTube has just completely died. <laughs> uh, YouTube, you are not a very good service sometimes. Someone would agree. No one should get rich from owning a business, housing, or land. I absolutely disagree with that. No questions asked. The social roles of women and men can partly be explained by biological differences. Absolutely agree. Market economy is optimal when it is not regulated. I... Rather disagree. Rather disagree. I do think there... Uh, again, my friend Alex is an economist and uh, he has very strong feelings on this as well that he would be able to describe in m much better terms than I can. But from what I know of economics, I think there is a good argument that there are some things that should be regulated. I think that a completely unregulated market is asking to be taken advantage of and i think the best way to regulate markets is simply through an informed customer base because the problem with an unregulated market and you can see numerous examples of that throughout history is that unregulated markets realize they can exploit customers but then all that really happens is the responsibility for not exploit not being exploited goes from the government to the customer which means that organizations and economic parties now have an incentive to make the customer feel as if they are not being exploited. And usually that takes the form of making the customer stupider in some way. For example, uh, a very major thing that I read about a year or two ago was the collapse of the American home cooking movement. Because until about the 1940s or 50s, America had an incredibly strong, and this was a feminist thing as well, uh, like feminism in America enormously valued cooking skills as well as uh, traditional housewife skills because they felt that in excelling at those skills was an empowering to a woman because it enabled her to keep a healthy family and a well-kept-for home. Whereas it was disempowering for a woman to not be able to cook. And socialites and so on were very much looked down upon because they were considered weak because they weren't able to provide a life for their children. But there's this whole great big thing where after World War II, the packaged food and industries basically went... You know, we made a gargantuan amount of money selling processed foods to troops in wartime conditions and also to populations in wartime conditions when women were in factories and they weren't able to cook for themselves. But now all those women are going back to their housewifing jobs and all the men are coming home from sea again. So we're very quickly going to lose the ability to sell processed food. And the answer to this was they started heavily advertising processed food to women as an alternative, as basically an easy way out. That basically if you made processed food for your family, it wasn't a bad thing because then you had more time in the evening to socialize or you could read a book or you could go out with your friends or you could play with the children. And it was pitched to people in this very kind of this is a positive development kind of way. But the thing was, the data shows this didn't work, is that women rejected that almost wholesale. And so what the 
what the food food companies came up with next was very insidious. They started buying sponsorships on American cooking programs. And they offered things like scholarships to women who enrolled in these programs and were featured on these programs. And they offered like rewards uh, for, and incentives for famous female chefs because there used to be a lot of female famous female chefs on American television in the 40s and 50s and 60s. So they'd say, "Oh, use this use this this say uh, this pre-made bake mix in your commercial, and we'll give you so much money." And that worked. And ten years after they adopted that program, the culture of home cooking in America was virtually gone, because they had been able to completely manipulate and destroy the idea of what an empowered woman was by way of this infiltration of things like cooking schools and uh, cooking programs, television advertising, etc. And that really stuck with me. And that's what made me think there is a place for market regulation. I think that advertising, particularly advertising companies, should not be allowed to advertise in any way that degrades traditional skills. And they should especially be kept out of broadcasting systems and programs where they can create a monetary incentive to use their products, which are specifically designed to create more demand by eliminating conventional skill. And that's one thing I think the market should regulate absolutely, because in an unregulated market, like as I said earlier, Every company has an incentive to make the to make the consumer stupider. Because an informed consumer is the enemy of successful advertising campaigns. So I'm going to go rather disagree on this one. Euthanasia should be authorized. I literally did a stream on on sanctioned suicide. A TLDR. I rather disagree because it's always a slippery slope, but I cannot absolutely disagree because I do genuinely believe that people should have the right to decide when they are going to die. Unironically, instead of government regulations of economy, you have church regulations of economy, so no usurers either. I mean, the sad thing is that, church, that the churches have been very good at usury over the years. And simony and all this other nonsense. Whoops. But I mean... I think that found the foundation... I keep dropping things tonight. I just dropped a sauce bottle on the floor. That was clever of me. Fortunately, it was a capped sauce bottle, so nothing went on the floor. <laughs> but yeah, you, but Magdalena's Rex hits on something, is that I feel that all that civilization should be ordered along moral bounds, and that people should be incentivized to, to apply moral reasoning to their decisions. So that a snap decision is a, is a bad decision and that people should be encouraged to feel that a decision which is bad for them, or maybe not bad for them, but suboptimal, a decision that is suboptimal but moral is superior to a decision which is optimal but immoral. It's just a whole thing of, you know, do you preserve the system at your own expense because you realise that it, that it makes everybody's lives better? including your own in a small way, or do you break the system to make life for yourself better in a big way at the expense of everybody else? And I always I always think that people should be incentivized to do the former rather than the latter. So I'm going to go rather disagree. Transhumanism will be beneficial because it will allow us to improve our capacities. I absolutely disagree. I don't think that transhumanism is in any way beneficial because it causes humanity to basically destroy itself in various horrible ways. <laughs> yeah, the transhumanism could be an entire stream by itself. I have looked into the transhumanism stuff very deeply and it scares the hell out of me. It, transhumanism is a terrifying thing. And the thing is, I really like science fiction, so I really like cybernetics and all that stuff, but how it is being used in current year and the ideologies and the people behind it are just... Oh! 
They scare me. They really do. So yeah, I'm going to absolutely disagree on this one. The main goal of a couple is to make at least one child. I would say absolutely agree. I think this is something that I've... That I have come to believe in most strongly since hitting my 30s. Before I was 30, I had no desire to procreate. After I hit 30... Yeah, I want to have kids. <laughs> I really, really want to have children. I, I acknowledge that I'm not in a position to have children, but if I was, if somebody, I mean, literally, if a woman that I found physically attractive and mentally acceptable, intelligent enough, if I thought that they would be a good mother, came along and said to me, you know, I don't necessarily love you, but I would be willing to put in the effort to raise children with you. I would be like, you know, if I have no other prospects, this would be an acceptable deal for me. I mean, I'm not sure if that says too much about that. You got the kid bug, lol. Hag, lol. <laughs> I would love to be able to access the internet by my brain. Problem is, who do you trust to make said tech? Uh, yeah. I don't I don't think that Neuralink will will be the way to go there. But yeah, uh, if if you'd asked me three years ago, I would have said rather disagree. Now, post 30, absolutely agree. The category is women and men are social contracts that no absolutely disagree. <laughs> I'm not even gonna not even gonna comment on that. It is merit that explains differences of wealth between two individuals. Mm. Ideally, in ideal society, merit should be the explanation for differences of wealth between two individuals. In practice, no. So I'm going to go rather disagree. Because... I think that it should be true, but it just empirically isn't. And you're a fool if you think it empirically isn't. Nowadays, employees are free to choose when signing a contract with their future employer. Uh, I don't quite understand this question, actually. Sorry, I need a drink. Uh, uh, I, I kind of disagree. I think the labor market at the moment is pretty ass. So, mm, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really understand this question quite enough to make an, to make a detailed comment on it. So I'm going to go rather disagree and move on. Stage-run companies should be managed like private ones and follow the logic of the market, competition, profitability, etc. Hmm, that's a complicated one. And I don't really have the experience to say perfectly one way or other. I think it depends on what the company actually does. If it's a company that is being kept afloat to artificially prop up a section of the market by a government interference, then no, it should not. Well, it should. It should be run in that way. But the trouble is, if you did, then you, you kind of remove the point of it being a state-run company to begin with, because state-run companies in general exist to defy the logic of the market for some reason or another. And I think that state-run companies have their place. So, again, this is going to be an I my ideal world kind of thing. I would say somewhat agree. Because ultimately, I think that if you have a state-run company, you should be able to justify empirically why it is better for this company to be run by the state than by the free market. And usually the answer to that is simply... A state-run company will be more reliable in terms of it of its output as opposed to fluctuating with the tides. And there are some cases where I think you can justify that. 
So some would agree. Energy and transport structures should be a public matter. I would say some would agree. Somewhat. Because again, this is whenever it says public, I dislike it because I think they should be, but the public needs to be informed as to what the hell they're actually doing. Because stupid people vote badly. And it's you have to educate a populace in order for it to be good at deciding public matters. So somewhat agree in principle. Foreigners enrich our culture. I'm probably going to uh, catch a bit of flack from the more right-wing kind of people to say I absolutely agree. I think that foreigners absolutely do enrich culture. But obviously, that is on the level of if they are legal immigrants, if they also integrate with the culture and bring their own unique culture as flavor to the new culture they are integrating with, as opposed to trying to imperialistically monopolize that culture and subvert it. Dismissals of employees should be forgiven, for, forbidden, pardon me, except if it is justified. Uh, this is a socialism thing. This is definitely a socialism thing. And I have never, I have never heard a good case where I, every example that I've heard of like employee laws for these kind of things. Well, actually, no. This is a complicated one, because I have heard so many negative experiences with things like Sweden, for example, and Japan, and its unfair dismissal laws that people just find loopholes around anyway, or they make lives living hell for businesses. But at the same time, I also know, like, my friend tells me about cases of... Uh, he told me a case a few months, a week or two ago. Uh, it was a couple of weeks, yeah, a couple of weeks. About an unfair dismissal where the employee was genuinely dismissed for something that was completely not his fault, which was blatantly illegal, and he took the company to court and he got $250,000. And, uh, like, my friend considered that a win, and so did I. So I'm going to say somewhat agree because i think there should be some grounds where just arbitrary dismissal you shouldn't do it because it's clearly it's clearly discriminatory or it's clearly unfair but for the most part i would also disagree because it's one of those slippery slopes where unfair dismissal can very quickly become a weapon against employers that causes them to pretty much just leave the company the country because they can't stand it any longer Look at Italy, look at Sweden, etc. Look at Britain even, which has far stronger unfair dismissal laws than the USA. Like something like 2% of uh, of major companies have their headquarters in Britain versus something like 50-60% in the USA. It's just completely obvious by market dynamics what companies where companies prefer to be based in and if you're employee discrimination laws are too strong then companies are just like yeah you know what we're not going to be here we're taking our money elsewhere so some would agree members of a nation or culture have some unchangeable characteristics that define them i mean yeah if you put an ethiopian next to a british person they have a certain they, they there are certain unchangeable characteristics between them <laughs> <laughs> that just leads to what Japan does to its unwanted employees, bully them into quitting themselves. Yeah, exactly. That's precisely. That's exactly my point. Yeah, absolutely agree. Social assistance deters people from working. That's a... It can, most certainly. I would say that some forms of social assistance are genuinely beneficial. I mean, my family benefits from social assistance because I have a disabled father who has severe mental anx uh, anxiety problems because of his ADHD and his autism. And also my mother has cancer and has to also care for my father. So they very much benefit from social assistance. At the same time, social assistance, because of their, assist of their circumstances, 
it does deter me from working because while I live under the same roof as my parents, I literally cannot earn more than a few hundred euros per week, otherwise they lose all of their disability benefits. Because my income will be counted along with theirs. And I find that just to be really stupid because in this country there are currently... In the whole of Ireland, there are under 800 rental properties for in a country of over 5 million people. And the average rent is something like 1,500 euros a month. Whereas legally, I can only earn about 400 to 500 euros a month. So my position is, if I start earning more, then I screw my parents. So, yeah, I'm a bit... So, yeah, you know what? Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. You can't spin this any other way. If I, I would be coping if I said anything else that I absolutely agree, because I'm living proof of this. It is necessary to teach history in order to create a sense of belonging to a nation. Absolutely agree. No questions asked. That is so common sense. That is so common sense. I can't imagine that you would ever... That, has anyone ever said absolutely disagree to that? Borders should eventually be abolished. Uh, rather disagree. As a Venezuelan, I absolutely agree. Yeah. I do think that social assistance has its place in society. Again, my parents would probably both be dead if they did not benefit from social assistance in some capacity. Because neither of them are capable of working. And it's not that they are stupid. It is not that they are incompetent. It's not that they're lazy. It is just that their physical circumstances and mental circumstances, in my father's case, simply do not allow them to work a conventional nine to five. But even so, I mean, my father is a very skilled individual, and what he does instead of work for money is that he assists wherever he can in the neighbourhood. He has an awful lot of friends because he is a very skilled person with his hands, and he, uh, he does, for example, computer repair work for people. You know, he teaches children about uh, how to use the internet safely and these other kind of things. So he gives back to the community in a way that is not monetary. And I think that if you can justify, if you can have somebody who does not conventionally fit into the workforce but can still contribute to a community, then that person absolutely deserves some form of social assistance. But I think that it's important to to weigh and monitor these kinds of things so that people do not end up taking advantage of them. Oh, oh me. Uh, anyway, borders should eventually be be abolished. Again, I disagree completely. I think that borders, for some... Uh, borders are just instinctive. You can't abolish borders because nations and cultures naturally create borders, even within their own heads. A border can be as small as the border between one village to the next. So, yeah, I absolutely disagree. Uh, there we go. GMO should be forbidden outside research and medical purposes. Every single piece of GMO, of anti-GMO stuff I've ever seen in my whole life has been insane environmentalist propaganda, which has about as much scientific value as pissing into the ocean. So... I have to disagree. I absolutely disagree. I do think that uh, genetic modification is a, a very dangerous rabbit hole, but I really think that there is no point in in like the GMO fear mongering is insane and absurd. The fact that some unit schools and universities are private is not a problem. I absolutely agree. I think that if certain if rich people want to send their ch their children to economically viable Emphasis, economically viable private schools, universities, they totally should. No problem there whatsoever. Absolutely agree. The sacrifice of some civil liberty liberties is a necessity in order to be protected from terrorist acts. Uh, a very loaded question that I don't like. 
I don't want to eat the goy slop, simple as. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, this is a slippery slope. It's one of those things that has objective value in that, like, if you if you have if your civil liberties are so great that you can go out and you can literally buy explosives at a corner store then obviously sacrificing that civil liberty would make it harder for a terrorist to buy those explosives and then use them to blow up a building patriot act ask question yeah yeah so yeah on a on an abstract objective level i would say agree but on a practical, real-world level, I would say disagree, because, as Luminous said, it always turns into a Patriot Act kind of, yeah, please give up, give up all your power to the government. We'll, we'll definitely not abuse it, we promise, and we'll totally give it back to you. So I'll have to go rather disagree. Activism in existing political organisations is not relevant to change society. I mean, I, I mean, let me see, existing political organizations. I mean, when he says activism, I think of, on the left, things like BLM, on the right, things like America First, Daily Wire, stuff like that. And as far as I'm able to tell, both those sides are pretty much just preaching to the choir. And this is something that, that Kirsha finds very distressing and annoying as well. That traditional groups that share the values that she has are not trying to actually educate bystanders as to what to look out for when it comes to, say, progressive, progressive propaganda or subversion. All they're doing is is highlighting examples of of progressive propaganda to their own existing user base, and then kind of smugly going, "Yeah, look, it's those nasty progressives again, doing exactly what we've told you they'll do. Please give us more money and campaign contributions so we continue to sit here behind our desks and smugly tell you that they are doing exactly what they said they would." So, I would actually agree. I think that existing political organizations today are just completely partisan and doing nothing aside from trying to milk money and fanaticism out of their existing support base. And if I was if I was a complete centrist in 2024 and had no strong political opinions whatsoever, I would definitely remain a centrist. I would have no interest in either side. I would be like, both of these both of these people are... Well, it's like George Galloway in the UK says, they're two cheeks of the same arse. And behaving like insane people to any bystanders. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I'd say absolutely agree. Ho hormonal differences can explain some differences in... in yes, but it's biological reality. Citizens should take priority over foreigners. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. Insurrection is necessary to deeply change society. Um, don't you know we're the? Don't you know we're the anti bad guy? If you don't, you're the bad guy. <laughs> Insurrection is necessary to deeply change society. Now. Again, on an, on an abstract objective level, I would say yes. I think that the only way to deeply change society in the lifespan of a single individual is an insurrection. It doesn't have to be a violent insurrection. It can be a peaceful insurrection. Ow. But, yeah. I agree with this. On the other hand, insurrection as a political tool is very, very good at destroying society rather than changing it. Test would have to define foreigner for that question. Yeah, I agree. I think some of these questions are a bit too vaguely worded for me to give uh, an informed decision on most of them. Sorry, I'm going to belch one second. Oh. 
Oh, that was a big one. Uh, so yeah, and actually, so I would have to, I would have to say that yes, but with the caveat that the insurrection is probably going to damage society as much as it changes it. <laughs> Homosexuals should not be treated equally to heterosexuals in regards to marriage, parentage, adoption, or procreation. Uh, well, homos <laughs> well, homosexuals are not going to procreate. They're gay. Uh, two men are not going to produce a child. So that's kind of that's kind of silly to say in regards to procreation. Like, if you're gay, you're not going to have children. And I don't, I don't think that's homophobic to say. It's just complete objective screaming reality. Fujos will tell you otherwise. Fujoshis are not well. Fujoshis are real, but male pr impregnation is not real. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean. Surrogates proctor, yeah, but that's still that's still one person having a heterosexual relate well not relationship but it doesn't it doesn't matter like they still have to perform a heterosexual act or engage in a heterosexual biological interchange in order to have children not all of these things belong bunched together i agree and one 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 partner of a homosexual relationship that uses surrogacy is always going to die. Their their line is always going to die out. Only one side of that family line is going to continue. And that's just, again, objective biological reality. Unless both parents, unless, well, both partners have, a ch have one child each with two different surrogates, one having one partner's child and the other having the other partner's child, but even then, genetically, they're just continuing their family line with genetics created from the surrogate as opposed to the partner. So the family line still ends. <laughs> like it, it, it become it becomes a social convention rather than a biological one. Surrogacy is kind of messed up. Yeah, it absolutely is. One hundred percent. Ah, I mean. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to say somewhat agree, but for for reasons that I can't go into in a YouTube video, probably. Research produced by my country should not be available to other countries. I'm gonna go neutral or hesitant here, because I think it should if the other country is an ally, and it shouldn't if the other country is an enemy. So I think it's too subjective to, for me to say anything but neutral here. People need to stand up for their ideals, even if it leads them to betray their country. Mm. I would say, yeah, of uh, people like Edward Snowden and so on. I don't think he's even betrayed his country, honestly. What Snowden did, I think what uh, what Edward Snowden did was uh, was a service to the American people, not a not a betrayal. So yeah, I'd say agree. I'd say agree. A good policy is a pragmatic policy without ideology. Mm, well, that's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. Straight, uh, not after all those hormones hit. Oh, I see what you're talking about. I thought you were talking about in reference to what was just said about trans people. A good policy is a pragmatic policy without ideology. Uh, this really makes me think, guys. This, this genuinely does make me think. I think... I think... Yes. But at the same time, I feel that pragmatism by itself is not automatically a good thing. You can be too pragmatic. I think the best policies are ones that are made by people intelligent enough to understand how pragmatism and ideology can interweave in a beneficial symbiosis 
rather than be at odds with one another. Is there anyone in politics that are John? Yeah, I think that, I mean, in fact, you could say that pragmatism is, is, is in and of itself an ideology. So I'm going to go somewhat agree here. Marriage should be abolished. Absolutely disagree. Multiculturalism is a threat to our society. Uh, again, another bloody loaded question. I don't think that multiculturalism is a threat to society at all, except when it is weaponized. I think that, you know, look at America. America is a melting pot of culture. And yet all those cultures, guess what happened? They came together and they became Americans. There you have German Americans, you have Irish Americans, but they are Americans with a capital, and then they are Irish or German with a lowercase. And I think that you can have a you can have a diverse multicultural society that is still homogeneous, homogeneous, and gets along with itself. I think that the idea that multiculturalism is a threat to society is something that the culture war and the last like. 50, 60 years has created. But I think, uh, again, on an objective level, there is absolutely no reason why cultures cannot mix and intermingle and produce a, a hybrid culture, which includes uh, elements of both previous cultures in a symbiotic relationship. So I would say rather disagree, but again, I understand that it can be taken to an extreme, especially if one culture is seen as superior to another. Depends on the culture. Islamic cultures are a problem because of how distinct they are. I mean, the thing is that I lived in Britain and there were plenty of Islamic people who are integrated into British society. And uh, the, and the, the, what people don't realise is in Britain especially, the, the division of, Isla of the Muslim and Islamic cultures from the British mainstream is relatively recent. There was a period where Muslims integrated into British culture almost perfectly. And for example, before Scotland became unbelievably paused and left-wing in every way, like for example, Sikh culture integrated almost perfectly into Scottish culture. Like there are plenty of Scottish Sikhs. I've met Scottish Sikhs. And I know that Sikhs are not Muslims. I'm not making that conflation, but like Sikhdom, like the Sikh culture is dramatically different from the Scottish culture. And yet Scottish and Sikh culture has intermingled and, for and formed a gestalt culture, which is, I think, extremely vibrant and extremely attractive. It's unique and exotic and very interesting. And it's the same, I think, that Indian and British culture intermingle together and create something unique and vibrant and fascinating but it requires the consent and understanding of both parties and it can be weaponized very easily and i don't agree with the weaponization of it under under any under any circumstances oh well me Every time I see Islamic people in Europe mention there's always someone saying they're invading and breeding us out. I mean, yeah, but that's because. But uh, the trouble is, I agree with that. They are invading and they are out. They are breeding Europeans out. But guess what? That's because European culture has failed. European culture has self-destructed on a dramatic level. And I think that it is. It is. Pos I mean, again, you should be wary of things like Islamic extremism. But it is absolutely and completely pointless to turn against Islam as a culture in Europe. Because let's imagine tomorrow if you could snap your fingers and make every Muslim in all of Europe just puff away into smoke. Guess what would happen? Basically, nothing would happen because the, the remaining cultures would still be left with birth rates that are below replacement rate. They would still be left with cultures who have been subverted by progressive insanity, who bring up children to hate their own cultures, to believe that being white is a stain on the soul that makes you objectively evil, 
that because you are the descendant of slavers, then you carry that sin with you for your entire life. And I'm sorry, you have to fix that problem before you can look at another culture and go, yeah, you're the problem. Ugh. Mm, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to go rather disagree here and move on for now. Loans contracted by the public sector do not necessarily have to be repaid. I I mean, that's just an economic question. I absolutely disagree. You have to pay, and if you don't pay, there's going to be economic fallout either way. Traditions should be questioned. I would agree. Euros cacking to Islam is nothing new. Look at Constantinople. Yeah. Sometimes it really shows you were born and raised in a cult and a bog in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, you forget that my mother lived, my mother, my parents rather, my parents, they lived in the most Muslim part of London for years of their lives. They were the only Christians on an entire street of Muslims, of first generation Muslim immigrants. And you know what that culture was like? Those streets had something like 90% fewer cases of violence, vandalism, break-ins, and general crime than the all-white streets. <coughs> they look back on that time in Muslim communities as some of the nicest of their lives, when they could both walk out in the street at any time of the night and be guaranteed that they would be safe, because every single Muslim on that street was a nice person, who didn't even lock their doors to their neighbours, whereas move three streets over to the all-white trash neighbourhoods and everybody's house was broken into every single night. There are some parts of there were some parts of London in the 60s and 70s where the average household was broken into every single night. It's like conservatives think that Puerto Rico would be a safe Democrat state if it becomes a state. <laughs> First generation immigrants are very different from second and especially third generation. I mean, yeah, I, and I think that, I mean, that's that's really the the issue with a lot of different cultures is the the first generation immigrants actually get along far better than the subsequent generations. And I've had very, I've had very nice experiences with with uh, Muslims who are first generation. Sure, Islam is Islam, but at least it's our Islam. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I disagree with you. I think that uh, uh, PR is safer than PR is safer than NY. I don't know what PR is. I'm afraid. I'm guessing that New York is is uh, is NY, but I don't know what PR is. <sighs> what else was I looking at? I'm sorry, I'm f I'm frowning really hard, squinting at the screen. I should stop doing that. I need to sit a bit close to the screen because I'm actually hurting my eyes a tiny bit. Ah, <sighs> <sighs> Puerto Rico. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Puerto Rico. I'm very bad with abbreviations. I share uh, Kirsch's issue in that regard. PR is Puerto Rico. Uh, traditions should be questions. Should be questioned. Yeah, I think tradition. I think traditions should be questioned. I think the tradition that cannot stand up to scrutiny and uh, have its reasons and its values clearly and uh, concisely explained is not a tradition worth keeping. It's that simple. Traditions should be based on logic and sound practice. In some specific conditions, the death penalty is justified. I would say agree. I've also realized I've got a massive, horrible smudge on my glasses that I need to clean off before I continue. Where on earth did that come from? Ugh. <sighs> There we go. Sorry about that. In some specific conditions, the death penalty is justified. Ah, uh, yes. 
I think that some people are simply completely irredeemable and society should get rid of them. Some sectors or type of employment should be financially supported. Mm, I don't really know what this question is asking enough to really say more than neutral or hesitant. I suppose it's like propped up by the government, maybe? It's too vague. I, I can't give I can't give a real answer here. Abortion should be limited to specific cases. Absolutely, abortion is murder. Conditions of life in jail should be greatly improved. I'd agree. But my interpretation of that should be, as I've discussed before, that, that jail should be basically abolished. That punishment should be quick, swift, and decisive, and then the victim, if should be considered absolved and allowed back into society with maybe appropriate uh, precautions taken if they are considered at risk of reoffending. But I think long term jail sentences should be completely removed, pretty much. Maybe exile in certain conditions, maybe limitations on movement, etc., but not traditional, conventional, you are in a cell 24 7 kind of jail. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking at what what is what are people doing on the Discord right now? Oh, I see. Sorry, I'm equally concerned about the inhabitants of my country and those of other of other the countries. Oh, come on, guys! Of other the countries. <laughs> Sometimes the person questioning the tradition is, however, too dumb to understand it, and it leads to bad place if it's deemed worthless. Well, yeah, again, it's another case of uh, you need to have a society set up to equip people to have reasonable moral and philosophical debates that do not resolve that do not resort to screaming matches or ad hominems. And society as a whole is fundamentally organized to make people have screaming matches and uh, ad hominems. Oh, pardon me. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to belch. I would say I agree. I think that the that the again, I have I don't consider myself an inhabitant of any particular country. I am I am a citizen of Ireland, but I see no reason why I should be more concerned about Irish people than British people or French people or. A Turkish people or any other person, I think in terms of immediate resource management, of course it's wise to be more concerned about your own people than other people, but I don't think that anybody's origin point has any determining factor on how worthy they are of concern. It's just a matter of practical limitation. So I'd say I agree over here. Exploitation of fossil fuels is necessary. Uh, I mean, look at society. I, I don't think you can argue this on any kind of perspective. That's just agree straight out. Social differences between ethnic groups cannot be explained by biology. That's a rabbit hole and a half. That's a real, real, real big rabbit hole. I would say... Neutral or hesitant? It depends very much on the ethnic group. Again, if you take someone... If you take someone from, say, Scandinavia and somebody from Ethiopia, it's just genetic fact that they are going to have adaptations that predispose them towards certain kinds of social activities. Like, they're, like people in the Deep South... Uh, of Africa just simply have higher stamina and higher levels of energy and have a certain schedule that they are literally bred to follow, certain ways of sleeping, certain ways of acting that are biologically beneficial for their conditions. Whereas people from Scandinavia have things like a higher natural tolerance for cold temperatures and uh, a social order and, rhythm and rhythms that... Uh, promote more conservative attitudes towards resources. And that's been objectively proven by various different studies. 
But at the same time, I do not think there is any biological difference between ethnic groups that can overcome the basic fact that we are sapient and we are able to change our behaviors by a personal will and decision. In a way, this race is more, pro more prone to violence, right, guys? Mm. So I would say neutral or hesitant based on those facts. We need to establish a monarchy to federate the people and preserve our sovereignty. Uh, bugger off. I'm not, I am not uh, the, uh, the aristocratic utensil. Sabotage is legitimate under certain conditions. Uh, sabotage of what? That's, that's, that's not specific enough for me to give an, to give an answer. Neutral or hesitant. Abstinence should be, pres should be preferred to contraception to preserve the true nature of the sexual act. Um... In or out of marriage? I think that's a... Uh, because, again, I'm a traditional Christian. I am not going to be sticking my dick into anything unless that thing has a wedding ring on. So, yeah, in my case, abstinence is an absolute, is an absolute preference to contraception because I am never going to have sex with a woman I do not at some point intend to have children with and raise a family with. <laughs> but in general... I mean, the, the, yeah, it's too much of a loaded question. I would go somewhat agree out of the principle of it, but again, in marriage, there's no reason why two married people shouldn't use contraception to have as freaky a sex life as they want, because again, they're married. They can do whatever they want to each other with consent. In before John Tron moment. Wait, Proctor is going to NTR and... What are you talking about, Azuhara? Uh, Azuhara, I just said... <sighs> Azuhara, I worry about your brain sometimes. I, I, I really, I really do. Anyway, some would agree. Elections organized by the state cannot question the powers in place. Um... Don't really understand this question. He said rich black people are as violent as poor white people. Oh yeah, wasn't there was something that I saw on Twitter that was actually this was a really silly thing that I saw on Twitter. It was a like a hardcore progressive outlet which was had this statistic up. I don't know if anybody else saw it. I don't have it bookmarked or anything. If somebody knows what the hell I'm talking about, I would really appreciate a link in Discord so I can actually put it up. But there was this uh, study conducted recently which showed that the, the the when you have black one percenters, as in the top richest black uh, people, the children of black people who are in the top 1% of the earnings bracket commit more crimes than white children in that like the lowest 50% income bracket that's what this study that this very hardcore progressive outlet was using and they said that Systemic racism is so powerful that the children of black millionaires are driven to commit more crimes by systemic racism than the children of poor white people. And I'm like, excuse me, um, I, 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 I don't, um, that's, um, ex excuse me, um, uh, sir, uh, madam, uh, uh Zay, Zay Zair, I, I, I think that you, you don't quite, you don't quite know what you're saying. You don't quite know what you're saying. <laughs> that's, that's not, that's not how the line is supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 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 is this it? Oh, yes, this is it! This is it! This is it! This is it! Oh, wait, is this it? I think it is. Um, 
It's something like this. Oh, it's similar. It's similar. It's not quite the same thing, but it is very similar. It's along the same lines. <laughs> Brady. Is this on the screen? Yes, it is. United Against Gun Violence. Our new study finds that despite making up just 14% of the US population, black Americans account for 60% of firearm homicides each year. Honoring black history means ending gun violence. Learn about the facts that make us act. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, if it's if it's on if it's uh, if it's allowed on Twitch, I don't care about showing on YouTube. <laughs> Wait, how the hell? Excuse me. <laughs> how the hell is this not something that is like sensitive material on Twitter? How is this not censored? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh dear, uh, this it- YES! This is it! This is it, uh, sarcastic. This is it. Yeah, each Equal Justice Initiative data shows affluent black kids are more likely to be incarcerated than poor white kids. Uh, yeah, it's a fairly short article. I'll just read this. A new study examining the links between race, wealth, and incarceration found that while poor white youth of all races were more likely than wealthy kids to go to prison, the likelihood of incarceration was higher for African Americans at every level of wealth compared to white youth. Researchers analyzed data from the National Institutional Sur Survey of Youth, which gathered data between 1979 and 2012 from nearly 13,000 young men and women. They found that wealthy black kids were more likely to go to prison than poor white kids. About 2.1% of the poorest white youth ended up in prison. 10% of affluent black youths ultimately went to prison. The incarceration rate for African Americans in the highest wealth bracket, 2.4% was only slightly less than that for the poorest whites. <laughs> uh, the data show that poor Hispanics had a higher incarceration rate than poor whites, whites, but lower than poor African Americans. And higher levels of wealth, however, the likelihood of incarceration for Hispanic males was similar to that of white males. Study co-author William Darity of Duke said that these findings demonstrate that wealth does not provide the same degree of insulation from imprisonment for black and Hispanic males as it does for white males. Race trumps class, at least when it comes to incarceration. The study also found that African Americans are far less likely than whites to accumulate wealth. The median household wealth of African Americans who was never incarcerated was 16,000 in 2012. In 2012 compared to 192,000 for whites that had never been incarcerated. For those who had been incarcerated, the median wealth for African Americans was zero compared to 5,000 for whites. Wait, even the wealthy ones now? How effed is their culture, man? Every day I... <laughs> uh, I'm saving that tab. I'm saving that tab. Uh, thank you, Sarcastic. I really appreciate that. That's that's a very That's a very useful thing. Ah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, political scales. Let's let's go back to this. I I love moments like that. I love moments like that. Uh wait, wait I'm sorry, I've messed up my tabs. There we go. Electors organized by the, yeah, I don't I neutral hesitant. The maximum allowed hours in the legal work week should be increased. Uh, yeah. I don't really see any point to allowed hours. I think that people should be empowered and educated enough to be able to negotiate with employers for a legal and acceptable amount of work. I don't think that arbitrarily saying you can only have uh, adult, you can only have people employed for a certain amount of hours each week really makes any difference. <laughs> I blame retards looking at stuff like rap, world star, hip hop, any jogger having a jogging moment and I think I can guess this is me. <laughs> he just like me for real, for real. Uh, yeah, absolutely agree. 
changing the system radically is counterproductive. We should rather transform it progressively. Um, I disagree because I disagree with the use of the term progressively here. That feels weaselly and kind of too loaded overall. So I'm going to rather disagree. It is important to encourage an agriculture that maintains a food biodiversity, even if the output is inferior. I would absolutely agree. I think that every single person should have, to the best of their ability, some form of personal food security, even if it is literally just a window box growing radishes. I think there is no excuse whatsoever for people to not grow at least some amount of their own food. Even their own, even some amount of their own spices. I think every person should have that, should have that experience. There is no case, I feel, where a person is justified in saying, I have no ability or knowledge on how to feed myself. <laughs> and food biodiversity is essential. I, I've studied farming techniques and farming methods in the past 50 years, and it's really, 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 really terrifying. I, I, I don't have time to go into it, but when I listen to the stories my parents used to tell me about what the wildlife was like compared to what it is now, yeah, it's really scary. It's really scary. I mean, it's... I, I remember a few months ago, like, my mother's 74, and she grew up on a farm. And I remember it was one of the first clear, nice weeks of the year. Like, we had a good week of decent, nice weather. And we still feed the birds. Uh, we make, because we do our best in in this uh, in this area to help birds survive through the winter and uh, uh, have nests and everything. We feed them mealworms, we feed them fat balls, we feed them grain as well because we also keep chickens and everything. So they get surplus of all the stuff that we feed. So there's there's considerably more birds in our area of land than there are in surrounding territories. And I remember we were feeding them outside and I was with my mother and I was throwing mealworms and there were maybe like 20, 30 little birds of about three or four different kinds all eating in the yard. And I just commented that, you know, that's a, that's, it's beautiful to see so many like it. And my mother just said, this would be, if, if there was a year in my childhood where we saw only 20 or 30 birds eating at a single food source. That would be the result of like a multi-year long dieback event. Like when she was a child, hundreds and hundreds of birds would have come to a yard like that. And like in the summer, she would be able to walk past a, a, a hedge and just run her hand through the hedgerow and disturb hundreds of butterflies, maybe thousands of insects. And when I listen to those stories, and I, I, I've even, uh, that I will credit the BBC for this, the British Broadcasting Corporation, because they are great at keeping their archives open. And I've gone back in the past, and I have watched old British nature programs. And the amount of wildlife in those programs is un... You can't convey it to somebody who has only grown up in this world. The... Just the, the, the vast amounts of birds, the vast amounts of ground wildlife, the, the enormous diversity of, of birds... Like you could you could walk outside and you could look in the air and you could see thirty or forty different species of bird in the air just flying above you, and that was like in the nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, before pesticides, before heavy commercial mechanized farming, and comparing the biodiversity before and then, it is the equivalent of going from a bustling metropolis to a French mausoleum. 
and it's real it, that that kind of thing genuinely terrifies me cats share a huge part of the blame too both quantity and diversity are way down i agree with you i i i, I just want to make it clear i'm not i'm not saying by any means that th it's all oh we just sprayed pesticides and we killed a, lot of a whole lot of birds and insects like no the, the, the problem is multifaceted there is a lot of blame to go around from dozens and dozens of different sources and cats most definitely are as you say a very high very high on the list of reasons why there are so few uh, birds and and creatures around nowadays compared to how there were but yeah, I mean, getting back to, to the question, it's like I say, I think that it is every person's responsibility to contribute to biodiversity in at least some tiny way. Even if it is as simple as having a single window box on your apartment, uh, on your, in your apartment balcony. Even that, it literally is a case of every little bit helps. So yeah, I would say absolutely agree to this one. Prison should no longer exist. I mean, I've, I've literally already talked about this, so I would say absolutely agree in the conventional sense. The state should be abolished. Uh, absolutely disagree. A state is a natural part of human... Of and The thing is, you can't abolish a state. I think that saying this is a stupid thing to say. Uh, what is the... And now, what have I just missed? Oh, sorry. Uh, someone just pinged me. <gasps> Oh, 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 me. Oh, me. Uh, I think that if you were to abolish the capital S state, there would just be lots of little states. And then every village would be its own state. Every family is its own state, in a way. You, you can't abolish traditional power structures because they just reform at a lower level. They just atomize and they spread out and they reform. So, absolutely disagree. This is literally impossible. It is, it is necessary to remove regulations in labor legislation to encourage firms to hire. Yes. Oops, what have I done? Oh, sorry. Yes, absolutely. I think that uh, labor laws in many ways should be massively relaxed. Not in terms of safety. I think that safety is incredibly important. But in terms of minimum wage... In terms of uh, hours people are willing to work. Because again, th things like zero hour contracts exist that just completely bypass labor laws entirely. Labor laws, when it comes to restricting working hours, are basically toothless and useless and have never worked. And also when it comes to age, I think that children should be allowed to start earning money as soon as they are, as they express a desire to do so. And I think that people, I think that children should get much more practical experience with the idea of uh, of work at a much earlier age than they do now. I think it is absurd that we wait until children are 18 to let them have jobs. We must fight against global warming. I mean, I would say agree, but again, agree in a different way than the than the state would, than, than the than the progressive rags would. I think it's every person's responsibility to live in a way that is in some way harmonious with nature. I don't think that extends to being like a just stop oil uh, con uh, person and going out and throwing paint or sick on an expensive painting. So yeah, in an ideal society, I absolutely agree. Maintaining strong economic growth through a be an objective for the government should be an objective. I'd say neutral or hesitant. Uh, this could be a whole topic for itself. But you'd have to you'd have to ask something like Alex about that. All I can say is that ah uh, yeah, go back to measuring gross uh, national product as opposed to uh, uh, gross domestic product. Nuclear fusion, when well maintained, is a good source of energy. I mean that's just again scientifically and factually accurate. Foreigners living in my country should be allowed to act politically equal to those who have nationality. No, <laughs> no. Foreigners should only be allowed to act politically after they have integrated. It is necessary to massively invest in research to improve productivity. Mm, neutral or hesitant. I think it's a good idea. I've never I've wanted a job since I was like 14 and my family never allowed me until I moved in with dad. Yeah, children should be working when we tell them to, not when they want to. Mm. 
I think the children should definitely have obligations, but not as in, hey, hey, son, it's your 12th birthday. I've got your nine to five lined up for you. I think the children should be slowly eased into the workforce. Definitely not forced into it, but definitely not just just pushed out, just pushed out um, uh, and just gone, hey, you've got nothing, you've got no experience or anything, but yeah, you're supposed to earn at least minimum wage now, no questions asked. Let me just check something. Yeah, we're good. Uh, neutral or hesitant, I think there is some good investment. I think there's some bad investment. Either way, no... The influence of religion to degrees? Absolutely disagree. <laughs> Again, traditional conservative Christian here. No, the uh, the influence of religion should massively increase. Because this godless society has caused nothing but famine, ruin, and misery. Activists must always act in strict occurrence with the law. Uh, in principle, yes. In reality, mm. I'd say somewhat agree. That's all I can really say here. That's another massive rabbit hole that I don't think I have time to go down. Differences in treatment and quality of life in our society show that racism is still in the present bugger off. Reduction of waste should be done by reducing production. Yes. Yes, it should. It's that simple. I think especially things like plastic tat from China. If I had the power of the economy to ban the production of uh, single-use plastics, I'd do so instantly. Go back to the go, go back to what we were doing before single-use plastics were invented. I would get rid of every single-use plastic without hesitation. No questions asked. I would press that button. <laughs> I think we should go back to, to glass bottles. I think we should go back to uh, uh, families owning their own containers that, that they brought to market, that they filled up, and they took back home with the products that they desired. I think that we overproduce, we vastly overproduce all kinds of plastics. I think we vastly overproduce all kinds of disposable containers. I think we vastly overproduce enormous different amounts of consumer goods that are completely worthless. I mean, just look at the crap on Etsy. On Ep Etsy? Eps Etsy. 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 Sorry. Amazon. Uh, uh, Alibaba. All that kind of stuff. No, just get rid of all of it. Just get rid of all of it. That is one. That is one part of society which I say don't be progress. Don't be. Pro don't progressively fix the problem. Just end the problem. Just end the problem. Just stop it right now. Force people to adapt because I don't care. I do not care if people are upset they can no longer buy single-use plastic crap from Amazon or AliExpress. I don't care. They can cope. So yeah, <laughs> I absolutely agree. My country must pay for the damages caused by the crimes committed in other countries. Um, how do I get my V2 for acrylics? I mean, at least something like an acrylic standee is reasonably... I mean, you... I'm pretty sure that if you... I don't know what the lifespan of an acrylic standee is, but, I mean, I assume if you keep an acrylic standee out of the sunlight, then it's going to last pretty much forever. I've never seen anybody say, oh, no, my acrylic standee is, like, flaking apart and falling to bits. So something like an acrylic standee I wouldn't have a real problem with. What I have a problem with is stuff that will genuinely has no purpose beyond a single use. And then it's designed to fall to pieces. The, the quality, the physical quality of it is not made to, to, be, to be used for longer than that. It's like, I, 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 I just railed against plastic, but like my family has a set of, I don't know what it's called, but it's like this special kind of plastic that was produced in like the 70s or 80s. Uh, it's not Bakelite. It's something like in between Bakelite and modern plastic. But it's very hard and it's very durable. It, we've used those cups and those bowls for something like 40 years non-stop. And they don't even have a scratch. Like, it's possible 
to produce incredibly strong, incredibly durable plastic that will not degrade, that will not fall to pieces, that melamine, melamine, yes, that's it, melamine, melamine is wonderful stuff, melamine is genuinely a miracle material, it is a absolute miracle material, melamine, I vouch for melamine cookware and like melamine bowls and stuff like that, they are fantastic. They are practically indestructible. You could fling them across a room onto a concrete surface and they won't even dent. And as I said, 40 years of use minimum and they haven't even discolored or changed. And melamine is beautiful. Melamine can be made in really beautiful colors and really beautiful designs. So I highly endorse the use of melamine. I heard some bug that can digest some types of plastic was discovered a while ago. I've heard that too, actually. I mean, hopefully it does, it does have some use. But yeah, stuff like melamine, excellent. Because again, you can design high quality, very durable, um, very durable pl plastics, and I endorse those. Plastic is a miracle material, and it should be used as a miracle material. It should not be dumbed down to the point where you can just make it and then throw it away within ten seconds. You have to be careful with it, as acidic foods can transfer, and it's not good to ingest. I, I that does happen. I, I agree. You have to be careful. There are some use limitations, but. I, again, forty years and still in use uh, with the proper with the proper methods. It, yeah, that works. Just don't like just don't uh, eat oranges out of it and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, nothing is perfect, but some things are far far underutilized in society. Uh, but yeah, I'd say absolutely disagree because this is just talking about race reparations. When it comes to things like, say, the the the, uh, I would be okay with the idea of America repaying for repaying a place like, for example, Vietnam, for the damage caused by Agent Orange. I think that the use of stuff like Agent Orange in Vietnam was one hundred percent a war crime that America should repay Vietnam for. Because it destroyed Vietnam's ecosystem, it caused immense ecological damage, it caused horrific birth defects, and all that kind of stuff. You can say that America is quantifiably financially accountable to Vietnam for what it did with Agent Orange in Vietnam. But in case like the race reparation stuff, no, sorry. <laughs> sorry, that's not happening. A good citizen is a patriot, uh, somewhat agree. Ooh. I don't really have much more comment on this, to be honest. Somewhat agree. All sciences, even chemistry and biology, are not uncompromising and are conditioned by our society. Um... What does it mean here? Is this one of those, like, black scientists could invent different things from white scientists kind of things? Or... I mean, I would say... Maybe somewhat agree? <laughs> Sorry. Because I do think that having different yeah i'm i'm not sure what this one is trying to say i i do think that different cultures will have different perspectives on sciences that can be valuable and that is why i'm not 100% against the principle of diversity because I know that men and women are biologically different we think in different ways so it's sensible to have different scientists of different backgrounds who are able to create a complete composite scientific picture of something to make sure it's not coloured by an overly narrow speculative. And that, I think, is good practice, but it's very specific when that needs to happen. Like, for example, in social sciences. There's a value to that kind of thing, and maybe in biology too. And but for stuff like chemistry, physics, I'm sorry, your race does not determine your opinion of mathematics. 
Like 2 plus 2 equals 4. So I would have to say, yeah, I, I'm going to go with the consensus that uh, that uh, that uh, Krigalo says. It's saying that science isn't absolute. I, and, I, and I disagree. Like, absolutely disagree. We should accept changes in our way of consuming food to limit the exploitation of nature. I mean, yeah. I mean, the problem is that this this one here is another completely paused saying because it's basically saying you will eat the bugs, whereas no, you should be concerned about the you should be willing to accept changes in the way of consuming food because most people eat far too much horrible processed food that is proactively damaging their cellular ecology. But this thing is definitely going to say oh if you say abs if you say agree then eat the bug stop eating meat hmm. so it's another another thing that i'm going to have to say although i agree with the principle the execution shifts me towards the disagree side changes in an individual's way of life can in can induce changes in society so i need to blow my nose one second please Yeah, sorry about that. <clears throat> Oops, I'm really knocking things over today. Uh, yes, because society is simply a collection of individuals. And if enough individuals change their way of life, then obviously society is going to change as well. So, yeah, agree. Looking for one's own profit is healthy for the economy. Um... Neutral or hesitant. That, that's too... That's too that's too general of a question. Technological progress has not changed society too quickly. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. There is no question in my mind that uh, technological progress has disrupted and damaged society on a fundamental level. That things like the invention of mass social media and the mass adoption of social media without any thought to the consequences and the use of information technology to uh, broadcast damaging messages and change societal norms to the points where things that were considered sane and rational even 20 years ago are now considered so absurdly extreme that it justifies immediately calling you a racist or a Nazi on sight. I'm sorry. No, society has changed far too fast. Society needs to stop changing Society needs to take a deep breath and focus on actually fixing its core issues before taking one nano step forward. My religion must spread as widely as possible. Hello, yes, I am a Christian. Absolutely agree. Violence against individuals is never productive. Um, now if we flip over right to the opposite side, because again, the Starship Troopers meme that violence has solved more problems than any other force in history. Profit is the natural reward for doing something for others they desired and needed. Yeah, that's not a bad analysis of the ideal view of profit, I would say. But in practice, profit tends to be through a very different lens. Uh, no, I, I absolutely disagree. Violence against individuals is often productive. It's not productive in a morally good way many of much of the time. But in terms of getting your own way and achieving a productive end that you desire, yeah, violence is absolutely productive. The results of that productivity may be nasty. When it's not born, but rather becomes a woman, I absolutely disagree. Oh, dear. Whoop. Sorry. Return. We should be retiring earlier. Uh, yeah, let's go to... Let's, actually, I skipped past that one. Yeah, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. Yeah, I, I think that we don't need to question why I absolutely disagree with that on instantaneously. <laughs> Whereas here, we should be retiring earlier. Uh... Neutral or hesitant, I think that every person should be allowed to continue their career up to the point for which they feel they are worth they are worthy of retiring. So, neutral or hesitant. 
offshoring and outsourcing unnecessary evils to improve production. Uh, this would be where my friend Alex starts screaming loudly and banging on a tin bucket. Because he is very protectionist, and so am I. I think that outsourcing is generally a bad thing. Generally. I think that society benefits from economics that are more protectionist in terms of national identity. I mean, to summarize, I think that it should be illegal for a company to be owned by a foreign entity that cannot be reached by its angry customers and uh, given subjected to physical punishment for harming them in the event that its products have caused them damage. I think that no owner of a business should ever be completely insulated from the physical consequences of exploiting and damaging his customer base. And that, if that fact was followed, there would be a lot less exploitation and a lot less evil corporatism in the world. Outsourcing slash international markets is the biggest weakness of the Austrian School of Economics. I agree. 100%. So I'm going to go with absolutely disagree here. It is, legitimate, it is legitimate for a country to intervene militarily to defend its economic interests. On the pragmatic and empirical level, I would have to say yes, because if a country is not allowed to intervene military, militarily to defend its economic interests... It's basically rolling over and showing its belly and saying, you know what, just kick the shit out of me, I'm not going to do anything. It's a whole, like, if you are immune from the consequences, then you have no reason not to do the thing you were intending to do before, but wouldn't have done because of the consequences. There has to be the potential of military consequences for aggressive, expansionist economic actions. Otherwise, there is going to be no deterrent for a superior power to just go, yeah, we're going to move in here, we're going to do whatever we want. So I'm going to say absolutely agree. Sexual assaults are partly caused by... Sexual assaults are partly caused by natural impulse. Um... What's it trying to say here? Well, I, I sincerely, like, I, I doubt that anybody has ever, well, I doubt that many people have been sexually assaulted because the other person was wearing a chastity belt. <laughs> it's like natural, well, I suppose when you take it to a high, like, the natural impulse of a higher level reasoning to commit sexual assault. No, that doesn't happen. But, I mean, people wouldn't commit sexual assault if they didn't get a thrill from it. WTF kind of feminist wrote this? I mean, inherently, sexual assault is to gratify a part of your own mind that says, I would feel good if I did this. Yeah, reptilian brain. Sexual assault is usually about extorting, extorting control over someone. Yeah, that's that's a factor too. Disagree, they are entirely caused by embracing one's lack of self-discipline. Yeah, see, the, the, the conversation that is going on in the, in the comments right now underlines why this is a bad statement. That, because subjectively, different people have different interpretations of what this even means. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go with disagree. I, get, I think that it's ambiguous enough that maybe you could make an argument that some are. But for the most part, I, I agree when it's when you say that there, it's about control or to cheat to propagate genes. Yeah. So yeah, I overall disagree, but I'm open to the idea that it is a possibility in some cases. National chauvinism during sports competitions is not acceptable. Um, I have no real comment on this. I'd say disagree. What's the point of having sports competitions if you're not going to be a bit chauvinistic? Like, that's the whole point. It is important that health should stay a public matter. Um, neutral. I think that some healthcare programs are better off public. 
I do think there is some that some forms of state healthcare are acceptable simply by the fact that that you know with the whole problem of of corporations producing drugs and then selling them for extortionate amounts of money i think there should be some public competition to to deal with that but on a very limited and very pragmatically planned out method so neutral or hesitant it is necessary to implement assemblies to ration our production to the consumers according to that's a planned economy I absolutely disagree Patents should not exist. Somewhat agree. I think that the national that the copyright system, trust public health care slash science that plus slash the slash the science. Mm. But my kids thinks she. Um, I think you didn't mean to hit enter there. <laughs> uh, the whole copyright thing is something I feel pretty strongly about. I think that patents should exist, but they should have much shorter expiry dates. Honestly, I think that another. I think that's copyright. I think that copyright and. Uh, but my kid thinks she has a girl estate should fund her estrogen. Uh, I think that your kid should uh, be spanked a lot harder. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna go somewhat agree, because I do think that the patent and copyright system is responsible for an awful lot of evil in the world, but the purpose of judiciary law should be punish those who went against the law. I mean, I would say the purpose of the judiciary system should be to seek justice for the victims, which can basically be punished those who went against it but i mean the wording here feels pretty fascistic so i'd say neutral or disagree uh i'll, I'll see later on if there's a more if there's one that covers it yeah i'd say rather disagree Justice should always take into consideration the context and the past that condemned and adapt their penalty accordingly. I would ag somewhat agree. I think there are some cases where it's so clear cut where there is no amount of extenuating circumstances that can that can hide you from the penalty. But I mean, I always go back to the example of King David from the Bible. Is that King David committed sexual adultery with Bathsheba? And he also had Bathsheba's wife, uh, hu wife, husband murdered. And yet he was forgiven those sins because he was sincerely repentant over doing them. Whereas by the Mosaic law, he was deserving of death twice over. And I think it shows that the context and the consideration and also repentance is very important but as as chrome davis just said it's also very easy for flawed fallible humans to take things in the wrong way again i trust i trust god's decision when it came to david because god could see what david was really thinking david wasn't going to be able to hide how he felt from god whereas a human judge can be convinced by sobbing crying or Oh, he was a good boy, he ain't do nothing wrong. Or whatever it is that's 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 said. His first child by her did die though, Dan David. Yeah, yeah, he was punished. Yeah, I'm not saying he I'm not saying he wasn't punished. He was forgiven this he was forgiven in that he was not put to death, but there was most definitely punishment upon him. But it just did not follow, but that was instead of being killed as the letter of the law demanded. And that's my point, is that, is that God did take into consideration context and past and so forth. And that was how he revised the, the sentence from death to the death of uh, David's first child. And then the consequences of him having a very large and divisive family that then decided they all wanted the, the crown instead of Solomon. And they went to, and there was a lot of civil war afterwards, which was the result of David's own actions. And that's a bit of that's a bit of biblical history 101 for people that aren't that aren't uh, Christians who who study the Bible. 
So I overall I'd say agree, but with the caveat that it needs a pretty damn good judge and a pretty unbiased and non-partisan uh, justice system. Again, I ideal versus reality. Order and authority should be respected in all circumstances. Yes. Armed struggle in a country is sometimes necessary. I mean, I think why they say civil war and neutral hesitant. Uh, I, I, again, I, I, this is another question where I don't think there's enough context for me to really render a proper opinion. Wage labor is a form of theft from the worker by companies. Uh, this is just Marxist 101 nonsense, so absolutely disagree. Sexual that absolutely is, wait, actually, you know what? Sexual orientation is a social construct. I'm going to be very controversial. I would actually agree with this on some level. And I agree with it on the mouse utopia level. And this is another thing that Kirsha comments on quite a lot, is that you often have cases of men who are... who become trans or who say that they are... You don't think authority is sometimes wrong? I mean, authority should be respected if authority is also able to earn is also able to earn respect it should be a case of me of there being a meeting halfway uh but where was i yes is there are many men who are exposed to so much like the sissy hypno stuff and the futanari pornography and I do believe that it's possible to warp somebody's sexual orientation via the abusive and vile, perverse, and unnatural kinds of pornographic imagery and creations that are out there in the world today. I think that's why furries are so... I, I, I want a study like this to be conducted, because I am absolutely certain that furries are the product of things like Disney movies and other sources and cartoons trans transmorphing or turning animals into objects of sexual desire. For example, you know, like Maid Marian in uh, the Disney's uh, Robin, Robin Hood is a big one. Like a, a huge number of furries said that like Maid Marian was so, that watching the Robin Hood it, when they were like 12 or 13, just hitting puberty, that Maid Marian, like the, the fox, the, 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 the sexy fox woman was the first time they ever felt sexual attraction to a woman was via Disney movies portraying anthropomorphic characters with breasts and so on. <coughs> so yeah, can you alter somebody's sexual desires and maybe sexual orientation via external exposure? 100%. It's weird how degeneracy can pervert it one way but can't pray it away. I mean... I'm not going to go into that. It's too complicated and too subjective. I just don't have enough experience with that to, to comment on it. Anthropomorphize anthropomorphizing. Thank you very much, Porian. The one movie about two dogs dating. I yeah, that like Lady and the Tramp. I think you're talking about yeah. And I think I I've said this before, but I believe that it is. It is natural and normal for children to grasp the concept, underlined concept, of sexuality at a relatively early age. In the idea that the, in the children are produced via sexual interaction between a man and a woman. And in a natural society, they would grasp that concept by exposure to nature. They would see things like, say, sheep during mating season having sex, or the fact that two birds, like a male and a female bird, get together and they have a nest. And so they can intuitively grasp, without perversion, that that is how children and sex functions on an empirical level. But when they learn, and it is twinned with things that also 
are the kind of things that elicit sexual desire, then you start the warping and the twisting process. Because there's a difference between empirically learning how something is done and being tempted into doing that thing yourself. <coughs> <clears throat> and that's a very hard thing to explain to modern people because it has become so natural and instinctive. And it really irritates me. It really annoys me how hard it is to explain that kind of concept to people. Because people have become so warped that they think that any example of, of sexuality must naturally be tied to an equivalent sexual desire. But I think that is entirely the product of modern media. <laughs> and it is entirely the product of the perverse hypersexualized society we exist in today. And that it's something that parents have a responsibility to keep their children away from. Uh, like, my children will not be exposed to the kind of things that I sincerely believe create things like furries, create things like, uh, you know, a sissy hypno addicts and so on. And my children are going to be very carefully educated to stay away from those kind of things. It's so, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating to even try and scratch the surface of any of this stuff because the, the, so much damage has already been done that drawing people back from, it's like the over, like the, the, the sexual version of the Overton window. It shifted so far towards permissiveness and so far towards, oh, it'll happen anyway. That trying to even take one step back towards something that is still extremely perverse, you get called a prude or insane or crazy. And that really bothers me. It's a massive pet peeve of mine because I, I see the damage that it does every, every time I interact with a local community. And I, I, uh, I don't know, it really, it really does make me mad on the internet, guys. It really does make me mad on the internet. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Sorry for that. It, sorry for that tangent. It 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 is something that bugs me an awful lot. But yeah, I'll, I'll as I say, I'm gonna go somewhat agree because of that. Because unfortunately, it seems as if on some level this is true. Annoyingly, depressingly, and disturbingly enough. It is unfair to set a minimum penalty for an offense or a crime. No. I completely disagree. There needs to be minimum penalties, otherwise the laws are completely meaningless. I do not have any problem if other official languages are added or replace the already existing official language in my country. Um... Whatever, dude, I'm a gender-fluid emo bathtub kin, and I find soap dove floozy as <laughs> an <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, neutral. I've never been in a country where there has even been the remotest possibility of English being declared a non-official language, so I just have no experience of this at all, and I don't feel that I can give my opinion on it. Biologically, human beings are made of heterosexuality. I mean, if they're not, then they die out. So, yeah, absolutely agree. <laughs> that's, a stu that's a stupid thing to say. Like, biologically, human beings are made of Of course they are. <laughs> I mean, uh, what? Right to, the right to be anonymous on the on on internet. No, the on the internet should be guaranteed. I mean, yeah, somewhat agree. Somewhat agree. Transforming ecosystems durably to increase the quality of life of human beings. This feels like it's a commentary on something I don't have any experience of. Does anybody in chat know what this is talking about? 
because because I don't. Let me, let me just get uh, have a like be quiet for twenty seconds because my throat is starting to get sore. I want to relax for a moment. <clears throat> Like converting forests to farms. I think there is a reason why homosexuality exists in all species, but obviously when there's too much of it, you have a problem. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go that far because I have a feeling that stating that kind of biological reality would legitimately get my video removed. <laughs> Maybe it's talking about Bill Gates and his modified Skeeter plans. I've very vaguely heard about that, but I never really looked into it myself. Agriculture in general, building housing. Yeah, I, I can't. I think that with people not being able to really state, I think neutral or hesitant. Hacking has a legitimate place for political struggle. Um, uh, has there ever been a case of like hacked material released to the public that was politically beneficial as opposed to like negative? Like, the Snowden report wasn't hacked, it was just leaked. I'm gonna say potentially, and that's it. The labour market enslaves workers. Disagree. Heavy penalties are efficient because they are dissuasive. Somewhat agree. Nobody is by nature predisposed to criminality. Depends what age. I mean, babies are not born criminals. I would say neutral or hesitant. It is necessary to avoid private monopoly. I'd say overall agree. So we're we're getting into fairly obvious questions that I don't really feel I I, I add too much by by commenting on. By the way, <coughs> it is better to arrest someone potentially dangerous preemptively rather than taking the risk of having them commit a crime. Um, whistleblowing, etc. Yeah. Mm, I would somewhat agree, but you need to have very clear rules and regulations in place to show how to make that legal. None of that. None of the bullshit like, held 48 hours without trial kind of stuff. I do think that there are cases where somebody has very clearly... Uh, I think stalking is a major example. <clears throat> or there are certain kinds of domestic uh, disputes and so on where I think that the risk... Yeah, it depends on how dangerous and obvious it is. Yeah, I agree. And I think that a clever and skilled, but also sociopathic or psychopathic or truly determined criminal, or not criminal, but person of ill intent, will know how to operate in a manner that enables them to skirt the edge of a more rigidly defined law while still being a legitimate threat and danger to somebody. And I think in those cases, it is wise to have certain limited discretionary powers in order to prevent those edge cases. But I think each one should be very carefully considered. There should never be a case of this happening where it does not result in some form of inquiry. And I think the results of it would always should always be public. I think there should be no case of saying, oh, we arrested this guy, we're not going to tell anyone. No, I think it should be public. So that everybody is always aware of what is happening in the society so they can make an informed decision on whether these laws are working or whether they are not working. Imagine TVA is another country and you have to deal with us Spanish speakers. TVA, if you don't aim to catch the super psychos, but rather all the idiots. Mm, so I'm going to go somewhat agree here. It is acceptable they're rich and poor people. Yes, that's just economic reality. Again, there's always going to be rich and there's always going to be poor. It's just changing definitions of what is rich and poor. Revolutions will always end up 
in a bad way. Uh, history pretty much bears out on this. I'd say there is pretty much no instance of a revolution that has made things objectively better for the for the population at large. Even the end of apartheid in South Africa, that revolution, oh, look at the state of Africa now. Look at the French Revolution. I think the like the the British Revolution, uh, like the British Civil War and the uh, Parliamentary Revolution is the only one where you can say, yeah, in the end it went back to the status quo peacefully. Mm, I, I'm confident in saying absolutely agree here. Minimal levels of salary should be ensured to make sure that a worker can live off their work. I absolutely disagree. Whoops, no, that's not just going. I think that minimum wage laws are a cancer in the in the economy and should be revoked. I do believe there should be laws which say a certain amount of work is worthy of a certain level of reward. But that a person, I think there should be laws in place that enable that enable an employee to call out a employer who is deliberately exploiting them for their labor by paying them less than they deserve. But I also think that minimum labor laws make it almost impossible for younger people to get experience in jobs often a young person is quite willing to accept i would be willing i do not care about minimum wage i would be quite happy again because my circumstances mean that i cannot earn above a certain amount of money per month i don't care about minimum wage minimum wage does nothing for me I would be quite happy to work below minimum wage for a job that I was happy with, that I thought produced something of value, and take the money as a bonus, rather than something to support my lifestyle. You know, to just give me a bit more pocket money, as it were. But I can't do that, again, because minimum wage means I can't do that. I either have to have some kind of torturous part-time contract arrangement, or nothing. And so in that way, minimum wage laws are, are a real hassle and pain in my in my ass in particular. So I disagree on this. If an employer is hiring you for minimum wage, all that means is they could hire you for less, they would. Yeah, I kind of agree. If you consider that informed people, yeah, I, it is. It is. And that's why I think that informed that, that a uh, that a, a popular should be informed because informed people are more difficult to control and they are more difficult to blindside with unfair and manipulative laws. An informed population is able to see unions are cancer where workers can call out. Yeah, I mean, honestly, unions, low like uh, minimum wage, it all has downsides. It is not acceptable that human, that human action should lead to the extinction of a species. I mean, absolutely agree. The values of my country are superior to those of other countries. Absolutely disagree. I think that the UK, as it stands, has no right to be considered itself superior to anything. Space colonization is a good su solution for supplying the lack of raw material on Earth. I mean, this is just complete science fiction fantasy. The Earth has a vast superabundance of raw materials. It's just a case of finding and extracting them. And there is not the single, there is not a single example of materials available in space that can be economically supplied cheaper than just mining more of them on Earth. Like, the, the whole fantasy of wheat grown on the moon is is a fantasy. It's just complete, absolute science fiction gibberish. It's just pie-in-the-sky dreams of insane people that have no connection to reality whatsoever. Revenues and capital should be taxed and redistribute wealth. Uh, I mean, taxing the rich just doesn't really work. I'm going to go neutral or hesitant because I have no bloody idea how taxation should really work. So, yeah, neutral or hesitant, Alex would be able to conduct far longer and more involved conversations than on this, on taxation than me. <laughs> it's acceptable that some industry sectors are private. Absolutely agree. Very simple, basic, basic thing. 
Environmental norms should be influenced by na mass consumption and not from an authority. Uh, I disagree. Again, uh, this is just a reverse of the question that I answered before. I think that mass consumption should be toned down. Mass strike is a good way to acquire new rights. Um, somewhat agree? Transgender individuals never really be of the gender they identify as. Uh, absolutely agree. That's just biological reality. We need to make compromises with the opposition to apply our ideals. Uh, neutral law has to, it really depends what ideals they are. Selfishness is the overriding drive in the human species, no matter the context. Um, by nature or nurture? I like George's land tax, okay, Sheriff. A consumption tax is... Mm. Mm, sorry. Uh, I... I would say yes in the absence of nurture. By nature, humans are selfish. By nurture, humans become selfless. And I think that's natural and not a bad thing. <laughs> I think that it is a, a sign of higher reasoning ability to overcome natural selfishness and become... This This going to send you to the far right for being religious alone. <laughs> <laughs> Taxation should be entirely opt-in, so you get a form in the mail every year stating what services the government wants to fund with your taxes and you check off the boxes you want to opt into. I mean... Yeah, I think that's just, that system has actually been tried before, and the result was nobody ever paid taxes. <laughs> I would say somewhat agree. You can make argue. I, I'm not like this is my opinion. This is my opinion. I think that it is. I think there is truth in this statement, but I do not think that it is the whole truth or the absolute truth. So somewhat agree, but I'm open to being proved wrong. Again, I think this could be empirically tested. Banks should remain private. No. <laughs> That's simple. Preserving non-urban ecosystems is more important than creating jobs. I... Neutral or hesitant. That's a weird way to end. Yeah, as Luminous said, people are stupid and they don't uh, know what services they actually need. I agree. That's basically how that system worked. I forget where it was tried. I think it was actually tried in England for a while. And that's why you why you need an informed populace. A lot of these things work. A lot of these alternatives work, but they place a minimum burden of education upon the populace. A minimum burden of selflessness, fellow feeling, camaraderie, and also commitment to extrinsic moral and social ideals. But it only takes a few bad actors to make those systems work badly. It'd be fine if you need to pay either, either way, but at least get a say so your money isn't going to, to DEI garbage or foreign wars. I would agree with you there, uh, Chrome Davis. If in America you pay tax and don't get any services, I mean, it's the same in, in Britain. Most of the same in Ireland, honestly. But yeah, this is a pretty, a pretty neutral way to go. Neutral hesitant. Let's see what I am, guys. <laughs> the result of your political scales is decomposed in eight axes. Each axis indicates your positioning compared to two opposing ideologies. <clears throat> Constructivism and essentialism. I'm 69% of an essentialist, guys. Oh, I can copy links I can share on Twitter, too. I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that later. What can you tell? I'm a filthy centrist in a lot of regards. What are these? I can't click on them or anything. A rehabilitative justice, I get a 48%, punitive, 36 Progressive, oh, what a shock, 62% conservative. No, no surprise there. Internationalism, nationalism, 
communism, capitalism. I'm I'm just I'm surprised. Well, I suppose that my the protectionist attitudes more align towards communism because protectionism is kind of part of communism in a lot of ways. Regulation, laissez faire. I think that's how you pronounce it, laissez faire. Ecology, production, yeah, that's, I'd say that's pretty accurate overall. I'd say that's pretty accurate. I don't see anything here I massively disagree with. Proctor is pretty... Thrang, I'll have you know that if my... If my stream elements was not bugged out right now and my chat, I wasn't able to ban people from my chat, I would ban you from the chat for saying that. Yep, that's about all I have to say. Communism pretends to be protectionist. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Centrist revolutionary. Uh, an article forward and nice, Jackie, nice. So I don't think anybody is enormously surprised by all of this. I'm surprised there isn't like an axis for religious versus um, atheist or something. <laughs> Ah, uh, centrist, yeah. Uh. Coming up to, yeah, two hours and 50 minutes. Also, the main reason socialism never works. I mean, I've been reading Hayek recently. I really like Friedrich Hayek. I would enormously recommend uh, The Road to Serfdom by Friedrich Hayek. It's a shame British parties are also paused. It makes Mosley looks look fondly upon. Mm. I mean, I like George Galloway. He seems to be a pretty good guy. The enlightened centrist. Mm, yes. I guess they count that under progressive slash conservative. That's true. That's a very good point, actually, because like traditional conservatism is very religious. Wait, revolution or... Oh, I see. Revo Wait. Well, I suppose you can call those different. Socialism doesn't work in the West. Socialism doesn't work, period. Like, socialism always leads to fascism in some way or other. And I really like Hayek, because he points this out in a very effective and uh, reasonable fashion. I might re I might do a reading of Hayek on stream sometime, because I, I, need I haven't read all of Hayek yet, but uh, I'm definitely going to read his uh, The Road to Serfdom, because that's brilliant. I can tell that from the, from the very start. And, uh, what else? What else? There's a whole bunch of books that I have on various different uh, political and social topics that I really want to read, but I just... It's hard to find time. It's hard to find time. I'm going to go back to just chatting, because I'm actually going to end stream soon. Because we, we spent only three hours on this, which I'm very impressed. Well, two hours at least. Try Mises Human Action. It'll take you like three years to read, but it's worth it. Hayek was a bit too wishy-washy. I like the Rothbard, Hope, Lady Lenin side of the Austrian school because they're staunchly right-wing and the Rothbard comes across as a sociopathic misanthrope at times. Mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, I have a lot to say about those kind of things, but uh, it's going to have to wait for a time when my throat does, is not st distinctly starting to hurt. Because, again, three hours of constant talk is about all that I can manage, and I don't want to go any further. But I had a bit of fun. I'm sorry I didn't get to the other stuff that I wanted to, like the call-out docs and so on. But uh, I would have done if I'd done the original uh, test I was going to. But I forget who recommended me that political test, but it, I agree with you. It definitely was better. It was more interesting, and it gave me more opportunities to talk about stuff that I actually care about. So, um, that was a good thing. I, I enjoyed that a lot. And now that I'm back to streaming, I hope to actually, uh, well, maintain decent streaming output. I might stream again on maybe earlier Friday, possibly, when I... Uh, uh, maybe Friday afternoon. I want to play. I want to play some RimWorld on stream. I really do. I would love to do a RimWorld stream where it's like designing VTuber characters in RimWorld because I've done a little bit of that because I have like fifty thousand genetics mods installed, which lets you like create anime people and lots of uh, really interesting uh, abilities and other stuff. 
Don't you dare overlap with Noel's return on Friday. Hello, Proctor. Hello. Uh, and Nigel, you were here at the start of the stream, too. I distinctly remember you were here at the start of the stream. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry, just looking at something. Oh, that's adorable. Bird femboy rims world, not clip bake. The bait, the bait, 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 bake. Ah, yes, anime eugenics. I agree. Anime eugenics are the best kind of eugenics that nobody ever tell you otherwise. Uh, well, guys, I think, honestly, that was... That's just about it. I feel an urge to go and attend to significant biological functions. In other words, I need to go to the bathroom. And uh, <clears throat> I think I'm going to call it a night for now. Need to make a note to... Uh, yeah, just save that, because this stream elements guy who paid me a bunch of money that I need to give him a custom title and stuff on the, uh, on the forum. Why do you love rimming? I mean, it's just a very good game. Good stream, thank you very much, Damned Lurker. Yeah, I'm gonna go rest my throat, and hopefully we'll have a bit more of a better thing sometime soon. Allow me to just actually find where my live stream is. Here we are. There we go. I do appreciate everybody who shows up and uh, gives me so much stuff to talk about because I would not be half the streamer that I am without an any without an interesting chat to bounce ideas and commentary off of. So I will see you again. Probably weekend, maybe, if Null is going to be streaming on Friday. My, it's probably not going to be Friday afternoon if I decide to stream on Friday. It probably won't be a particularly long stream. Just a, just a fun messing around with the RimWorld stream. So we'll see. Anyway, for now, I thank you, all of you, one and all, and I will say good night. <laughs>